Open 8% Hard AF Seltzer is now live in over 1,200 locations across the United States. We're now available in Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, North Carolina, Ohio, and Texas. Go to hardafseltzer.com today, click on the store locator, enter your city or zip, and find the nearest location closest to you. Live from our studios in Austin, Texas, this is Drinking Bros Fake News with Ross Patterson, Dan Holloway, Papa G with the traffic. How you feel? Not good. Yeah. Field reporter, Hot Bob. And Delco Dan with sports. Welcome to Fake News. Welcome to Drinking Bros. Fake News, everybody. Bringing you the realest, fakest news of the week. I understand if you're watching this in picture in picture right now and you got the tourney on. March Madness has started, D'Anthony. Dookie knees has already flown into the second round over there. Do you have them in your bracket or do you have BYU? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Dookie. Yeah. I would never... I would never trust a Mormon, <laughs> you know, certainly not 12 of them. The, the phrase Mormons is trending right now on Twitter. So I wish more men were like them. But uh, now they're out. They're gone. You don't have to uh, see them soak. Isn't that the, the ones that soak? Yeah, but there's like, uh, you know, there, there's other stuff. Like what? So soaking, you can soak and then have somebody else jump on the bed. What's that called? I don't know what the second part's called. Is there a phrase for it, Bob? What happens when you're soaking? Because in the, the Mormon sex, you're allowed to put your penis inside the vagina, but you can't thrust, right? Uh, it's called jump humping, I Jump guess. humping, so, yeah. So yeah, you soak, and then another person jumps, or a lot of times they'll be under the bed and kick it. That works, too. So they're doing the movement for you. And uh, this actually, much like a T-Rex that can't see you unless you move, this tricks mm. God. Yeah, uh, yeah. Relatively, if you if you uh, pay attention to religion over the span of human history, and I have, it's not that difficult to trick God. Apparently, no, right? No, it's pretty. It's, it's like, pretty easy. The Jews did it by hiding women sure on their periods outside the like. There was another smaller city. You had to over there. Yep. It's like, hey, you're uh, you're gross. <laughs> you got to get the fuck out for the week. <laughs> I just can't get over the fact, though, that you'd have to have your buddy underneath you doing it. I think if it was a, another girl, like her friend. Uh, no, I think you hire somebody. Better jumping up and down. I think you hire someone. Like a midget? No, a Kenyan. Oh, you want to? Oh, a lot of stamina. I don't want that. Yeah, but stamina. it's got to be a female Kenyan. Uh, I don't know if they're allowed to run. They are. They win they every year. They don't have rights. The women? Yeah, well, they, they run in America. Mm. So they win the Boston Marathon Let's every see. year in America. Yeah. Because we don't give a fuck about immigrants here. Like, everybody's welcome. That's how I would do it. Because uh, they they can go for hours. I don't mm -hmm. think though if it, if it's your first time putting your pee in a V, if somebody's jumping up and down and you're just soaking for you know let's say five minutes before they start jumping up and down, that's gonna be a quick release. I mean you're done though pretty fast. I yeah, but imagine. I mean there's round two. There is. Then three and four. There is obviously. Yeah, so maybe that's where the marathon runner comes in because you want that over several hours. Yeah. I guess in, in between like. I don't know, building a shed or whatever those fucking people do. Yeah, they they're do. They're mountain Jews, you know. Yeah. So I actually, this is a fun, uh, uh, this is kind of how soaking came about, uh -huh. allegedly. We and haven't he, even gotten five minutes into this show. Oh, yet. I love it. This is what we're here for today. We're partying. In 18, Spring break. In 1885, one of the LDS church's top leaders, 73-year-old apostle Albert mm. Carrington. Not, not one of their bottom leaders. <clears throat> no, no. no. Yeah. He argued during excommunication proceedings, I believe that his own excommunication, proceedings <laughs> that his decade of extramarital sexual relationships with multiple younger women did not count as adultery uh, and was only a quote little folly because he would only partially penetrate the vagina with just the tip of his penis sure and only part of the shaft uh, quote in the excommunication proceedings is on record I guess 
quote, uh, the total, quote, depth of four inches and pulled out Whoa. before ej- ejaculation. So Whoa. he only went four in. Uh, his penis is probably only four inches. So, yeah, he's putting the whole goddamn thing in there at that point. Good luck telling your wife that at home. Look, it wasn't cheating. I just put the head in and then yeah. another four inches of my shaft. You got to think uh, wieners are getting bigger, too, right? Because people are getting taller. So it makes sense. Feet, you think so? Feet are getting bigger. Really? Hands are getting bigger. People are getting taller. So I, I would assume dicks are getting bigger, too. Dicks are getting bigger because uh, our testosterone's down. Yeah, that, yeah, that's recent, though. I just mean over the past, let's call it, thousand years. Dicks right? are getting bigger over the last you, ground day? They would have to be because, like, the average person a thousand years ago was, like, five foot five, right? Mm. A dude would five five to five eight. Like, Napoleon was average height. Was he really? For his time, yeah. All right. Like uh, George Washington was a fucking monster. He was like six three. Yeah, that's everybody. All I am. Everybody else is like five seven. Yeah. So it's like being you, you in Hollywood, basically. Yeah, everybody else much. is a fucking midget. Everybody's a very tiny, very tiny man. It's disgusting. And I'm glad you compared me to George Washington today. I appreciate that. That's not what I was doing. You at sure all. did. No. You sure did, and I appreciate that. I mean, as far as owning slave teeth, I think maybe there's some similarities there. Ah, uh, I've got a bag of them underneath my bed. Just in case. What? If these fall out. Yeah, well, you can make a wish with them too. Like if you go to one of those wishing wells and you throw in slave teeth, yeah. that's like. You're going to. That co- wish is going to come like, true. Fuck coins. You're going to win the lottery. Yeah. You're going to win the goddamn lottery. I think it's up to 800 million right now. Yeah, but if uh, a couple of these parlies fall out of my uh, gullet, I'll pop a couple slave teeth in. Mm-hmm. Um, just I, to get the job done. I'd look into it. Yeah, I would. Uh, we might be uh, giving them out too at a, at a tasting tomorrow for Hard AF Seltzer. Ryan Mills, where are you at tomorrow? Right here, right I here. I feel like you're um, Carmen San Diego. Where everywhere. in the world is Carmen San Diego, <laughs> Ryan Mills? So, this Friday, 22nd, uh-huh. I will be at Total Wine 508, which is the uh, address is going to be 981 West Interstate 20 in Arlington, Texas. We got plenty of uh, hard AF there, and we'll be giving out. All kinds of merch and just getting rocked until we get kicked out of there. And it'll be a good time. So come on by from 4 to 7. Arlington, Texas. Tomorrow night. Join them. We'll, uh, I got my thing here. We'll sign a bunch of shit and, uh, and, and have some fun flirty giveaways. I like this. This is one of my favorite things that we have right now. Um, I'm gonna, we'll, we'll give this away, too. This is my favorite goddamn thing on the planet right now. Um, we've got a bunch of cool merch and all that other shit. So, yes. Uh, Go see Ryan Mills tomorrow night at Total Wine, 4 to 7 in Arlington, Texas. Let's face it, you're drinking all weekend anyways, watching uh, March Madness. We've all got the brackets dialed in. We appreciate you tuning in to the show today. Let's give him a fucking banger. Start with the news, shall we? First up, oh, Hunter. (laughs) Oh, Hunter. The Hunter Biden hearings uh, have started and they were explosive mm. yesterday, D'Anthony. Like diarrhea. Yeah. They really fucking painted that porcelain, dude. Real paint job in the porcelain up there on Capitol Hill. Two former business associates of uh, Hunter Biden testified publicly on Capitol Hill on Wednesday as congr- congressional Republicans pushed forward with their impeachment inquiry against President Biden, leading to several tense and revealing moments. Our fave, Tony... Blubolinsky, a U.S. Navy veteran who formerly served as Hunter Biden's business partner, appeared publicly for the the House Oversight Committee hearing. Uh, Jason Galanis, another Hunter Biden business associate who is serving a 14-year prison sentence. You heard that right, 14 years. uh, Testified virtually (laughs) from federal prison camp, dude. Oh, it's so great. Uh, a minimum. Do you think he used a prison. cute background or a Snapchat filter or something? I didn't see that part, but uh, I saw the the Bobolinsky. Pop this up. Pop this clip up here, Bob. Same people preaching this mantra know better. They continue to lie directly to the American people without hesitation and remorse. Rep. Dan Goldman and Jamie Raskin, both lawyers, and Mr. Goldman, a former prosecutor with the SDNY from New York will continue to lie today in this hearing and then go straight to the media to tell more lies. Hunter Biden's defense attorney, Abby Lowell, weaponized his letters to Congress to try to smear my name Mr. and Chairman. state the cold hard facts M- Mr. Chairman. in an attempt to save his powerfully connected client Wait. and his father. I challenge Mr. Lowell to make those claims on national television so he can be held accountable for his lies. Prior to my successful business career, I was an officer in the United States Navy at Navy's 
Elite Naval Nuclear Power Training Command. I later served as the, chief's, uh, the command's chief technology officer. Proceed. I apologize for the disruption from the... the okay. Am I supposed to say it's my time, Mr. Raskin? Yeah. <laughs> please, <laughs> Mr. Bobulinski, please. Okay. Come to order. Uh, Mr. Bobulinski, Mr. Bobulinski, please okay. proceed. Okay. Please proceed. I apologize <laughs> for the disruption from the minority. Okay. Well, Mr. Chairman, if it when he says from the minority, does he mean an actual minority or from the party? I just want to know whether the order and decorum requirements of House Rule 11 apply to witnesses appearing before the committee. Uh, do, do the, does it apply or does it not? Are they talking Should about it? Oh, I love it, dude. Yeah, They're actually talking about Raskin it. Raskin is a fucking uh, cunt, right? Yeah. Obviously. Um... There's, hard li there's decorum from the members. We've asked for that. There's no language that I'm aware of pertaining to a witness. Thank you. So, so, so shut uh, your fucking mouth, Raskin, you cunt. Uh, make sure we didn't uh, waste any of his time on the God opening statement. God damn it, what a piece of Mr. shit. Mr. Bobulinski, I'm sorry for the disruption. Please continue your opening yeah, statement. I think uh, you, Mr. Raskin, used we'll, we'll make sure it's right. We'll oh, make okay, sure it's right. Great. I just want to restate. Uh, this make guy's sure the American fucking people hilarious, hear all by these the way. Facts. Mm -hmm. Abby Lowell. Uh, Bobulinski yeah. really crushed it yesterday. Yeah, he really got in there. And then, as I'm sure a lot of people have seen, he got into some kind of like back and forth with AOC about Rico not being a crime. Uh, this is going to annoy the shit out of me, but go ahead and play it. Oh, and then I, then I, I knew it would. Then we can describe. I knew it would piss you off. Then we can just like, <laughs> she's, she's a fucking bartender. And everybody else in Congress is an attorney. Mm -hmm. Like 90% of Congress are attorneys. But so, she's got naturals um, and heavy. I don't, those, I don't think those are natural titties. They are. No. They are. They're natural. I don't think so. They're, they're naturals. And I think that's a push-up bra. She's got heavies. No, no. We ha we've never seen her in anything that would let you know whether or not they're real. I've never seen her in real life. You're right. I have no idea. But like even in a fucking photo or video or some shit, right? We've, yeah. Yeah, she's had her. She's had her uh, no. Do you remember the video where she's tying back her hair? Yeah, but it could be a push-up bra for nah, you know. She could have definitely isn't. she could have like uh, billiard balls and tube socks for titties, and she just got them all smashed into some fucking push-up bra. You don't know. I'm the king of naturals, dude, and uh, trust I me, know I know who you are. When I when that's I see not no. Yeah, I don't think so. I am. We'll I find only out. Like, I only like naturals. We'll find out at some point. She's gonna take the subway. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody will get her right. She's got that Tesla, dude. She can park wherever she wants in New York City. Uh, but play this clip as she tries to go after uh, Bobulinski yesterday. Is it your testimony today that you personally witnessed President Joe Biden commit a crime? I believe the fact that he was sitting with me while I was putting together a Did business Did you deal, witness the president commit it, a crime? Is it your testimony today? Yes. And what crime... Do you, uh, have you witnessed? How much time do I have to go through it? It is simple, you name the crime. Uh, Did you watch him steal something? Cor corruption statutes, you, RICO and conspiracy. What is it, what is, are, uh, what is the crime, sir? You, you, Specifically. You, just, uh, wait, you keep, uh, you asked me to answer the question, I answered the question. No. RICO, you're obviously not familiar with. Corruption excuse statutes. Excuse me, sir, excuse are, me, sir, excuse me, sir. RICO is not a crime. It is a category. What is know. the crime? It's a category of crimes that you're then charged You under have charges. A long hundred You have charges. Yeah. Sir, please you want me to name, name the exact statute sir? under RICO. Yes. Oh, well, it's funny. In this committee room, everyone's not here. There's over eight All right, sir. I reclaim my time. Lawyers that I went to law school. I'll I reclaim my time. I reclaim my time. You guys hey, thank you, sir. I reclaim my time. Yeah, she wasn't one of them. No. By the way, very obviously. So, just quickly, um, I guess RICO isn't specifically a crime, but all the other stuff he said, right? So far as the Foreign Agent Registration Act, which means if you're going to do business with a foreign government, you have to register with the State Department. And Hunter Biden didn't do it, and neither did Joe Biden's brother, right? Mm -hmm. That's one. That's a predicate right there. Um, <clears throat> RICO is what Trump is being charged with down in uh, Georgia. Sure, RICO is, was designed uh, to go after organized crime, right? So if you can show past, present, and future crimes, it, it constitutes an ongoing criminal conspiracy, which With means- With more than what, three or four members, right? More, two or more. Two or more, yeah. okay. Uh, just like any, it's basically conspiracy, but uh, uh, made for organized crime specifically. So 
Uh, we have three members, Joe Biden himself, who's received payments. We know that, right? Mm -hmm. Hunter Biden, who's received payments, and Joe Biden's brother, who received payments from companies. Uh, are for, are from, yeah, from companies that are directly associated with foreign adversaries, which is a problem. Those are crimes. And the fact that three of them did it over the course of time, those are conspiracies. So each time uh, a bribe, each time money changed hands, each time they had a conversation about it, that's conspiracy. Each individual time is a separate conspiracy charge that they had a conversation about it. Um, uh, uh, and each, in any attempt to cover it up, whether it is sworn or unsworn testimony, those are still crimes, right? Mm -hmm. If they if they filled out any kind of legal or financial paperwork that didn't disclose those things or that obfuscated them, those are additional RICO predicates. So yeah, it's a fucking crime. You yeah. stupid goddamn bitch. But she's the one attorney. She's the one person in Congress who's not an attorney, right? Yeah, yeah she's yeah. like well, fucking bear, bear, bear. RICO's not a crime. I reclaim my time. And, but here's the problem with both Republicans and Democrats when you do this fucking bullshit in front of uh, these hearings over and over and over again. It's all about them. Mm -hmm. They don't ever... There was a black lady yesterday. I don't know what the fuck her name was. She was a fucking moron, too. Oh, yeah, dumb, dumb. Um, Big time, dumb, dumb. She never asked a question to him. She just kept... In, it's my time. It's my time. I'll let you know when it's time to talk. It's my time. And it was like... Cool, then what are we doing if you're not going to ask questions and you're just going to talk for eight minutes? Why is he even here? And same with uh, AOC. She said the same thing. I'm going to reclaim my time. Time for what? You to talk about what you think is happening? Meanwhile, the guy that's actually here in front of you who's the witness, you don't have any fucking questions for him? Um, and that's how most of these things shake out. If it's going against the Democrats, uh, they'll never fucking ask the person questions. And same with Republicans and everything else. They'll just kind of pander and uh, to their base and all that other shit, and then hope that something like this doesn't go viral, which it already did. Yeah, well, I mean, the left probably thinks this is a victory. I, I don't. I, I, I think they probably do. Like people are completely fucking brainwashed with this stuff. It's weird to see. Uh, the other thing too, uh, going back to AOC here real quick, was I checked her Twitter last night because she was trending all night long. And, uh, and this clip was going viral. Uh, and she said, you know, this is a sham impeachment uh, inquiry and we should never be a part oh, of this. Yeah. Uh, and, it was, and I replied under it. I go, ah, you mean like the two times it happened under Trump? Once when he wasn't even in office anymore and you went back to impeach a president who wasn't even in office anymore. Like those two? And it's the same thing I've said for fucking four years on this goddamn show. As soon as you started these impeachments, dude, it's going to happen to every single president for the history of time. Yeah, now. yeah. It's all this is uh, this is gay as hell. It is. Um, it is. One of the other funny parts that happened during this was when Bobolinsky uh, called out um, Rokana, right? So Raskin, Rokana, a couple other people. Uh, he he had repeatedly reached out to them specifically. Like try reached out to their office and gave them evidence of wrongdoing by the Biden family, and they refused. When th this is when uh, the Democrats had the majority, right? Okay. He kept sending them the stuff like, "Hey, you guys got to look into this." Blah blah blah. Yeah, you gotta do something fuck. about this. Um, and they were like, "Ah, <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of shit going on today. Um, <laughs> my cat needs a haircut, so I'm sorry. Could you send that to my assistant? We'll get right on that." Yeah, I got a golf thing later on. Just got the new uh, PXG Black Ops driver. Yeah. I got to test that out. And then today. for for this event, uh, Rokana interviewed the other guy, Parnas, who was remote or whatever. And then after that was done, he left before Bobolinsky took the stand. Great. Because, you know, you didn't want to get directly called out, although Bobolinsky called him out anyways. Yeah. Obviously. He just didn't want to be there in the room when it happened, I guess. That's going to happen. Who's that blonde chick you got there, Bob? Uh, I was looking for the video Dan was talking about, <clears> but I have some. It was It's a Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, talking to him. Oh, really? I didn't see this. Uh, what? It, what is that? Play it. Fuck it. What, what's she uh, holding there? A little speaking set? A text between. Is that WhatsApp stuff? <clears throat> you can play it. I, it is, I haven't I seen think it. it's WhatsApp. See? I want to show you a text message that Hunter Biden sent to you oh, Blackberry. and what his other fuck? business associates. I'm holding it right here. I'll read it to you. Hey, Tony, I have an idea. In light of the fact we are at an impasse of sorts, and both James' lawyers and my chairman gave James an emphatic Biden. no, I think we should all meet in Romania. He's speaking about my chairman. When Hunter Biden came in for his deposition, he said that he was referring to Chairman Yi and that the rest of your group referred to Zhang as a different chairman. Does this make any sense to you? 
Th that's a lie. I never heard Director Zhang reference as chairman, <clears throat> and I had direct com communications with Director Zhang over WeChat, <clears throat> met him in Romania, met him in Moscow, met him around the world in New York, trying to develop this business, and he was never referred to as the chairman, first of all. Second of all, that makes absolutely no sense in the context of this message because we are discussing Oneida Holdings, LLC. Thank you. Chinese so he was not the chairman, just to clarify. Yes, Correct. Or no? Okay. So I want to show you another text. When he said his chairman, he was talking about his dad. This is from Rob Walker. It didn't seem to make much sense to Rob Walker either. So he said that when Hunter, he said this to you, when Hunter was talking about his chairman, he was talking about his dad. When Rob Walker came in to give his transcribed interview to the committee, he basically said, well, Hunter was high or confused or mad. And Rob Walker said that he was just trying to calm things down between you and Hunter. But that doesn't really answer the question about who Hunter Biden is talking about. Hunter Biden lied to this committee. So here, clearly, he says, Rob Walker's saying he's talking about his dad. So I want to be very clear. We've established that Zhang is not the chairman, obviously. Is that correct? Yes or no? Correct. Let me show you another message. Oh, this guy's this correct. message wow. doesn't you. call Zhang Chairman Zhang, does it? It just says the Chinese want to do business with the Bidens. As a matter of fact, it says both coming to be my partner, to be partners with the Bidens, with an S. He, Zhang, is implied, has implied that the number one has made it clear and available to him. Who is the number one? The number one is Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping, the president of China? Yes or no? No, the other the one. The leader of the Communist Party. He, he's the, the foreman CCP, down at Jeffy Lube. Yes. Is the number God damn one. Dummy. Yes, that's the number one <laughs> that Hunter was referencing in that message. Now, let's you know, be very Xi clear. From this down was at Jeffy in 2017, Lube. but I would like to make it known for this committee uh, that Joe Biden told the press in 2016... As a matter of fact, he, I quote, yeah, I am. I am going to run in 2020. He told the press in 2016 that he was running for president of the United States in 2020. So here is the Bidens doing business in China in 2017 when everybody knew he was planning to be president of the United States. Do you see that to be a serious problem, Mr. Bobolinsky? I do, and I wish this committee would thoroughly investigate it and focus on all the evidence that the SDNY has on CFC. They had FISA warrants, so they were recording conversations, and I wish they disclosed all that data and fact to this committee. Thank you, Mr. Bobolinsky. I yield, Mr. Chair. Look at that, dude. Look at that. So first of all, looking at Bobolinsky, he was the partner of Hunter Biden who was with him on all this shit, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm going to be honest. I kind of want to party with, with Bobolinsky as well. I think so. Bobolinsky is probably the one to party with because he, you can, if he's hanging out with Hunter for that long and doing business with him, yep. you know he parties. Yep. And two, he's been able to keep it together. He's been able to keep it together. So I and feel that's like important. that's a dude you can fucking go out and do cocaine with. Yes. Like for real. Do cocaine, maybe a hooker dies. Right. And nobody says shit about it. But Bobolinsky's going to cover that up. Yeah, he'll cover it up. He's and, the guy. As long as you don't fuck him over, right? Correct. Yeah, I think. And then you fucked him over. Now here he is. Let's let's um does I, certainly he doesn't have any social media or anything right Bobolinsky not yeah. sure but I like his demeanor he's like a Russian police officer he's stern but fair if we could find this guy and I think probably Hunter crossed the line there and he said look fuck you dude um you know I'm not getting a cut of this anymore and I protected you mm. every time you were cracked out and you couldn't pull your dick out of one of those prostitutes. I'm the one that pulled off. I'm the one that jacked you off. Mm. I'm the one that made sure you finished and I got you home at night. I'm the one who gave you a Z-bar so you could come down off the cocaine. Look, man, Tony, if you're out there. Call us. And you want to party, we're looking to hire uh, somebody, you know, to run the booze company, actually. You sure are. Uh, I don't know if you're interested in that, but you can just come Ooh. hang out. We'll interview you a bunch of times and... Yeah. You know. It'll be Ryan Mills and put Tony some, Bobolinsky we'll put on some, the road, dude. We'll put some tastings. dinners. We'll put some dinners on that Amex. Sure will, brother. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll dial it up. And I you know there's been so much cocaine all over big naturals. I'm gonna go back to naturals there. And Hunter probably looked over and just said, Hey Tony, 
do that thing. And he's like, ah, oh, come on, man. Do the thing, dude. I'm gonna I'm gonna dump cocaine on her titties. He's like, all right. Blobolinsky. And then popped up. Cocaine all over his face, cocaine all over titties. Everybody was having a good time. Bob Alinsky's another guy I want to add to the party list. Hunter's at one, obviously. I, uh, no, Hunter's Bob Alinsky's at two. Hunter's two for me now. Really? Because this guy's got his shit together. I don't want to babysit anybody. I don't either, but if Bob Alinsky's there, like this is our foursome if we're playing golf. Sure, yeah. I would do that. Yeah. I guess. But I, I just don't want to put like I want uh Tony to, you know, be able to do his thing too. Sure. I don't like we're, the reason sure. we're bringing him is to have fun. I don't want to jam him up with a fucking child. Yeah, here. but it's like I most people, you know, <laughs> if it's a make a wish type sitch for adults, um, you know, one of us goes down with something fucked up. I'm thinking like uh, us and Tony and then Ezra Miller. <laughs> and then he's not going to be able to keep it together. If Ezra gets out of hand. He'll oh. be a lot easier to control than fucking Hunter Biden. He'll start slapping people. He was slapping women around. Remember yeah, he, he, he chucked he, a chair at that fucking lady? Nobody who slaps women also slaps men. That's true. People who slap women are cowards. Yeah, right? that's true. Yeah. Uh, but either way, Bobolinsky, hit us up, dude. I'm ready to party. I guarantee you he'll be on this show in what? Three months. Within three months. We'll get him. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, we've gotten everybody else. Why not him? <laughs> Called my mom. Who's on the show today? Ah, Tony Bubulinski. Do you know him? We ended up doing lines with him for uh, Gator Tales for hours afterwards. Great guy, great guy. Uh, to cap this off here, D'Anthony, what do you think is going to happen with all this? Um, I mean, nothing, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, I think probably if if Republicans were to win both houses of Congress somehow and and the presidency, maybe they're not winning, dude. This 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 entire election is going to be rigged. I there's no part just, of me anymore that yeah, thinks yeah. any of this is real. I'm well, it's definitely not real, but you it's know, it's going to be a real election. Should they should they manage to win somehow? Um, maybe Trump puts everybody in jail. I don't know. Uh, I, I, hard to say, I, 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 but he's going to gonna, like. There's so much stuff. To, he's only got one term, right? Yeah, because he's already done one, and he's got to fix immigration and the fucking economy and the housing market, especially like that one, especially. It's like, I don't know if he's going to have time to be putting people on trial and shit. And he's got to end some federal agencies and the NFA and other stuff like that. You know what I would do? And I'm being completely sincere when I say this, if I'm Trump. I go in first day and I, I give a, a pardon to Hunter Biden immediately and just say, hey, this bullshit, right, left, trying to go after presidents and their kids and all this other shit needs to end. I, it happened to me. I'm fucking sick of it. I don't really give a fuck if, if Hunter Biden and his dad were, were selling fake paintings and all that other bullshit and then just end it and say, hey, dude, just as a party, can we walk away from this and stop going after presidents and their kids and shit like that? Like, fuck it. Um, that's what I would do. Um, because, look, it's crack cocaine and prostitutes there. And then just a, a couple of billion dollars that, that changed hands. Who was the victim? In this? I think they should play Stone Cold Steve Austin's walkout music. Oh, for fuck. Trump, instead of here come or hail to the chief or whatever the fuck, yeah. instead of that, as soon as the door opens, the glass breaks. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. And he's like, <laughs> I, yeah. Steve Austin would love that, by the way. I bet he would. It would be uh, a, definitely a, a uh, I guess you could call that a bucket list thing for him. Fuck, it'd be a bucket list thing for me. Mm. I'd like to see it. Uh, but yeah, I, look, all this shit, if you're doing it in front of our faces like this on a daily basis over and over and over again, there's no fucking way. We're getting an honest election coming up. Oh, uh, we're not. I mean, there's get, no way. Whether whether or not we get an honest election regarding our, it, it, it won't be because of this stuff. It'll just be because we probably never have had an honest election in the history of the country. Frankly, right? I'm just saying this is the only time in my life where shit has been this blatant in front of our faces over and over and over again, and nothing has happened. The only thing that, is, that shit's happened to is Trump right now. That's it, and it's. That even that side is obvious. Where you're like, these are all fake fucking trials and all this other shit. This is a fucking I don't know fake thing ne that Nixon, nobody's gonna give a fuck Nixon, about. Nixon Nixon got railroaded like this too. Like the stuff that he was doing was should not have resulted in him getting uh, impeached or resigning from the presidency. Like uh, being a member of a campaign and spying on the other campaign. That's not illegal. The I, fuck. I, I don't know. Like, I mean, it like uh, uh, in I don't know if. If the Watergate Hotel is in D.C., right? It is, yeah. Is it is D.C. a single-party consent state, or is it a... I'm not sure. I, I it's know. one of those weird... Because it's its own mm. thing, so it's not a... 
is not part of a state. It's kind of like a city, but I wasn't alive for, for Richard yeah. Nixon, so D I don't really D know that DC, much about it. DC honest. is a one-party consent state. Okay. So, there, like, no crime was really committed. Now, G. Gordon Liddy was a fucking lunatic. Um, I don't know if he's as crazy as that that many series made him seem. The one oh, that yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think he was that crazy, <laughs> but uh, he is—he was a fucking pipe hitter for the feds, right? Was he really? Oh yeah, big time. Okay. Like, he fucked people up. He—he was—he straight up murdered Sandinistas and all kinds of shit, dude. But anyways, uh, they railroaded the fuck out of him, of Nixon. It was like an opportunity to get him out of there and replace him with somebody that they knew would be weak and easy to beat. And what was the result? Jimmy Carter getting into office and fucking Ugh. up our economy. Yeah, right? I mean, worst president ever next to Biden. Second, mm -hmm. actually second. And good for Jimmy, because he's still alive, right, mean, Bob? Is Jimmy still alive? JC still with us? Yeah. That man isn't going anywhere. Okay. He's outliving you. Uh, probably. All of us. Yeah, probably. But uh, JC's got to be happy at the end of this. Maybe that's why he lived this long. I mean, So he, he could see a worse president than him, because yeah. I think Biden will go down as the worst now, and Jimmy Carter will be a, a, an easy second. And I bet it, if his last dying word will be, finally, people are going to stop fucking calling me that. Yeah. Uh, worst in modern history. I Like, James Buchanan is, is by far the worst president ever. Easily. Like, by it's far. not even close. No, but in modern history. Yeah, modern like, history, yes. I honestly, I think you could have a tough time topping Bush. Oh, for the weapons of mass destruction thing, yeah, maybe? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, you had that and the recession and the and the him. Department of Homeland Security and the Patriot Act, right? It's a yeah, lot. it's a lot. Bush, uh, up there. Bush is up there for sure. Yeah. I for mean, fucking sure. The, the the effects of the shit he did added probably fifteen to twenty trillion dollars to our national debt. And the, and the war, the war went on That's what for I'm saying. fucking ever, yeah. dude. So uh, that and they he's said up like there. we didn't have the money to stand up a new fucking to add one hundred and twenty thousand new government employees. We didn't have the money to do that, so we printed it. Yeah. Right? I, I so think, we didn't have the money to go to war with two countries at the same time, so we printed it. We I didn't have the money for the fucking bailouts, the TARP bailouts, so we fucking printed it. Yeah. You know? Also, know. Reagan kind of sucked. He wasn't very conservative. No. I don't know if I would say he sucked, he though. Was fine, though. Like, the reason, we, the, re, the reason Reagan spent so much money and tripled the national debt is to break the back of the Soviets. Which, which I'm down with that. You know, yeah. I, like, I don't like it. It's not conservative, so he, he's definitely not a conservative person, but... It worked. He was also so. the governor of California, which is not mm -hmm. conservative, let's face it. But uh, I think people give Bush a pass because he was so dumb. And, and I genuinely think the Will Ferrell thing on SNL really helps with his image and everything else where – uh, there's a lot of people, if you talk to them, they were like, ah, but did he really know? You know, he wasn't really that smart. It did. There was a whole 30 Rock episode about basically that. Was it really? Yeah. What did they say? Uh, there was like there was a, there was a political uh, candidate who looked exactly like tr uh, Tracy Morgan, Tracy Jordan on the show, mm -hmm. and they started portraying him on on the fake show at SNL on Thirty Rock, and the Republicans were like, "Please keep doing it because he's actually a horrible person, and it's making him seem very likable because he's also like a goofball." Oh, uh, I, I guarantee and, it. And Tina was, Fey wrote that. That was inspired, I, it, I believe, yeah. by Will Ferrell's George W. Bush. Yeah, because it, it kind of made him like oddly beloved, where he was just this dummy walking around, and all we kind of talked about with him was uh, doing coke, being in Skull and Bones, and crashing his car into people's houses and shit, getting DUIs. That was one time, man. Right, but that was one time. But that's the thing. Laura Bush killed a guy though. If you're, did she really? Yeah, yeah. That's is that true? In a fucking uh, car wreck. She got right, stateside. Yeah. She got stateside. Yeah. Fuck. And she got out of that, obviously. That Bush is. I mean, she up, right. Not only did she get out of it, she became a teacher afterwards. Who covered that Bush? Who covered for her? Moses. She wasn't even a Bernie Bush, Bush yet. Um, oh, she was. It was, was pre-Bush. She, yeah, she, she, she had no, she had no she Bush. She was like 16 or something like that. No Bush in her name that, at that point. Okay. I think 16. most of the 16-year-olds I've met at Bush. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Oh, so. she, she was 17. She ran a stop sign, hit another car. Oh, boy. Was it an old old, should, old head in there? Should, should we make a shirt that said Laura Bush killed a guy? Yeah, murder. Well, not it's not murder. That would be slander. Oh, okay. Well, I guess it, it would be libel. It would be libel technically because it's printed on a piece of clothing. But gotcha. Um, no, you just say Laura Bush killed a guy. Okay, All right, dead. It's factually correct. Family Guy did that. Was it an old mm -hmm. head, Bob? I was. I'm. My money's on an old head. Uh, seventeen year old. Ah, oh, oh, another seventeen year old. Yeah. God damn it, man. That's that's a rough one. What she are you got out do? of that, huh? What are you gonna do? 
I guess marry a president. There you go. Fuck, man. Marry Prescott Bush's grandson. You'll yeah. be all good. Yeah, you sure will. Skull and bones, brother. Oh, first sponsor is Ghostbed. Ghostbed.com forward slash Stringer Bros. I don't even know that they existed back then. Um, you know, when, at the time of that death. Otherwise, I would have said, well, I hope they were sleeping peacefully. In a ghost bed, a nice mattress from ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 50% off everything in the entire store. Bob, pop it up on screen there. What do we got for the people there? Uh, look at these mattresses. God damn it. There's a lot, dude. All of them made in the U.S. of A. Uh, scroll down, Bob. Uh, keep scrolling, scrolling. Look at that. Look at that happy guy in the back of an RV. Why? Because they got mattresses for RVs too, Okay. If you're out there and you're driving around in an RV on one of those shitty mattresses, stop doing it. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and rev up your rig. It's time to get a new mattress there. You've earned it, king. You've earned all my kings out there who have RVs. Go ahead and order one of these goddamn things. They're amazing. Best night's sleep of your life. If you're on some old, bumpy, dirty, dusty road out there, you deserve to pull over. Sleep on a nice mattress because you got a long drive ahead of you the next day, okay? I want you to be safe, unlike Laura Bush. She probably killed somebody in an RV. Can't say. Don't know. We don't have the internet to, uh, to back up those claims. Uh, so we'll never know. And you guys at home will probably never know either. But you can, uh, can sleep in comfort over there and then just stack it up. Stack up the card as high as it'll go. Put 60 items in that goddamn thing. Pop in the promo code Drinking Bros at checkout. Get 50% off. And then you're going to see a three-year pay-as-you-go program. No interest as long as you have decent credit. Stretch it out over three years. Take advantage of it. You still get 50% off. They can't stop you is what I'm saying. They don't have zip ties over there at GhostBed. All right? Do what you want. Even if you're dying, dude. Leave that debt to your kids, okay? <laughs> what I'm saying is just pass it off to your family members. Enjoy the, the spoils of life now, if you are dying, and then pass off that debt to family members. That's what we do here in America, all right? Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today for the best night's sleep of your life. These pillows are great. I just got some new ones over Christmas. Next up, SCOTUS diversity hire doesn't understand the Constitution. In a big week for the Supreme Court, justices have heard several cases relating to the First Amendment's Arguments from one case relating to government censorship sparked viral backlash after Justice... What the fuck's her name, dude? Kentanji. I can't say it every single time. Jumanji. Jumanji Brown Jackson appeared to suggest government collusion with social media companies could be justified. On America's Newsroom on Wednesday, Fox News contributor and constitutional scholar Jonathan Turley outlined his concerns over the chilling remarks from Justice Jackson. Whenever somebody uses the word chilling to describe something else or a statement, I immediately get my own chills here. I got yeah, chicken skin right now. I started hearing the, uh, what do you call it, the music from uh, Friday the 13th. Yeah. Kill, oh. kill, kill, kill. Oh, no, what's the other one? Ka, ka, ka. Do, 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 do. Whatever that fucking Mike stupid. Myers, Mike dude. Myers, that's it. Yeah. We got a Mike Myers head out in the lobby. Yeah, somebody ripped the head off that somebody thing. Somebody got fucking drunk off hard AF seltzers and ripped the goddamn head off. It may have it been expensive. It may have been Alex Jones because he dragged it into the studio and fought it one time when he was pissed drunk. He did, but it was alive after that. It was definitely a listener. You yeah. fucks. He was mostly giving it body shots. Brought which it is from Hollywood, you bitches. It was it's life, it's life size. That thing's fucking six five uh, out there. Um, now he said there are indeed uh, important First Amendment cases here. Uh, somebody associated with the, the free speech community. We're all on edge. Everybody's on edge. It was chilling in the social media case to hear justices like Jumanji Jackson repeatedly saying, well, what's the problem with government coercing speech? Why shouldn't they uh, when there are really troubling periods like in the pandemic? And many of us were really uh, sort of agape I'm a big fan of that word, by the way, especially when it's concerning uh, <laughs> buttholes like the one behind me from Hope Solo, because much of what the government did on the censorship was wrong. Many things 
that they were censoring by scientists who were fired and disciplined and barred from social media in some cases. They were vindicated, ultimately, on things like the origin of the virus. Uh, and on censorship was wrong, many things there were censoring uh, by scientists who were fired and disciplined and all that stuff. They were vindicated on many of those things, and yet Jumanji Jackson saying, I don't see uh, why the government can't coerce social media. So we're all very concerned where the government will land there. I'm concerned too, D'Anthony. Same. Um, so here, the, um, the comments in question about Kentonji Brown Jackson. So the Supreme Court heard Murthy versus Missouri on Monday. It's a case challenging the Biden administration's alleged coordination with big tech to censor certain messages, right? We talked about, I think we talked about this on the show with Tulsi the other day. We did, yep. Um, <clears throat> the case stemmed from a lawsuit brought by the AGs from Missouri and Louisiana that accused high-ranking government officials of working with social media companies, quote, under the guise of combating misinformation that ultimately led to censoring speech on topics that included Hunter Biden's laptop, COVID-19 and its origins, the FSK uh, face mask, so on and so forth. Um, as the justices questioned whether the Biden administration crossed the constitutional line, uh, Jackson appeared to suggest that those actions can be justified. So she, this is her quote. My biggest concern is that your view has the First Amendment hamstringing the federal government in significant ways in the most important time periods. Uh, and so I guess some might say that the government actually has a duty to take steps to protect citizens of this country. And you seem to be suggesting that the duty cannot manifest itself in the government encouraging or even pressuring platforms to take down harmful information. Yes, you stupid cunt. Holy fucking shit. Yeah. The First Amendment was designed specifically to hamstring the federal government. That is literally the purpose, you goddamn bitch. It doesn't matter if there's a fucking emergency or not. Are you fucking kidding me? This is a Supreme Court justice. She's a fucking moron. She is an idiot. She doesn't know what a woman is. She doesn't understand the very basic nature of the Constitution or its scope. Get her the fuck out of there. She needs to be impeached immediately just for saying that shit out loud. It'll never happen, dude. It'll never she is a she is an years. absolute diversity hire. No shit. She's there because she's a black woman, and that's it. That's it. Because she's a fucking moron. Well, homeboy had to stick to what he said pre-election. Do you remember that? What a stupid fucking cunt. He God said, if I it. get to uh, choose a Supreme Court justice, it will be a black woman. Yeah. yeah. And that limits your options. Because then you're stuck. Once he got in, he was like, oh, fuck. God damn it. Do I have to actually do this? All right. Well, who's this one? And then Jumanji pops up. And, uh, and then they were like, fuck it, throw her in. Let's do it. Well, let's do it. Uh, but even, you know, when they asked her what a woman was during uh, the hearings there, it wasn't any fun flirty shit like Kavanaugh just having beers with his buddy, working out in the garage, setting new PRs, blasting his quads every day. It was Jumanji saying, I don't, I don't know what the definition of a woman is, even though she is one, allegedly. Well, we don't know for sure. I, I've never seen it. I've never seen the, the, the V or the P. I don't know. Mm. I don't know if she's got a P down there. So when you said it, you meant her genitals. Correct. Or a I'm describing whatever the genitals may look like. Yeah, I guess they are genitals. I think it probably looks like chicken parts in a plastic bag. Oh, boy. Man, I can't believe we're doing that today. I was going to say like that Haitian guy who was all burnt up in the barbecue sitch, but whatever, man. I don't know. I've never seen it. Have we ever seen a Supreme Court beef shot in the history of our nation? No, I mean, I think we got to bring it up. Right. Who, out of any Supreme Court justice over the history of uh, justices, who do you want to see? Thurgood Marshall. Really? Probably had the biggest dick. I bet he did. He's black, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's black, and I believe he was married to a black woman. Now, uh, the current black dude, what's his name? Clarence Thomas. Clarence, Clarence Thomas. Thomas. He's married to a, to a cracker, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So, Ginny. Ginny's her name. Probably. He's probably like got a regular sized dick. I think yeah. Thurgood Marshall to be a fucking black Supreme Court justice during during the civil rights oh, bro. movement, you had to have a hog on you back then. Pop open a pick of uh, Thurgood here. Yeah, I mean he's kind of light skinned too. That's so all know. right. No, he's got the hammer of justice down there. Yeah, yeah I look think at that. Did, did he use his cock as the gavel? During four of the, the times he was on the Supreme Court, he did. I guess yeah. the gavel broke, and they were like, can we use your penis? It's too obvious just to say one of the female justices, because uh, if I was going to pick one, it'd probably be Amy Coney Barrett, because she's young enough to have sex with still, right? Mm. Um, you know where I'm going with this, Bob. You know I'm going RBG, dude. 
<laughs> I gotta see that RGB, that RBG. Beave. I, I know, but it's it's the younger one. Oh, you Bob. think it stands for Ruth Beaver? Beaver Ginsburg, Ginsburg. yeah. Mm. I want to see that. Beave. But I want to not like when she died. What was she, 90 something? Was she Love Balloons? Was she another one? Oh, Love you didn't Balloons? say we could pick which age group they're in. Well, when like did she it, start? It had to be when, when she was an actual SCOTUS. That's judge. what I'm saying. When did she start? Bob, do we have a picture when she started? Let's uh, yeah, see uh, that beef. Yeah, find her swearing in. Ceremony. Yeah, I just want to see what she looked like back in the day. Oh, boy, it's not great. Oh, boy. Fucking A. Oh, it was, it was 92. Oh, uh, look at Clint. Even Clint, look at the look on Clinton's face. He's like, even I don't want to fuck this broad. <laughs> Clinton's like, oh, man, I wish I could have picked a hotter one. I, w- I wish I could have picked a hotter one. I don't want to stick my P in her V. I definitely don't want that P in that V right there. Oh, look at her. Zoom in on that face. God damn it, dude. This is like an overeager Sammy. Oh, I thought that's you a, meant that's a sorority reference. Yeah, go ahead and look at. Uh, Yeesh. Go back to Bill's face. She though, got that beak that's... on her. Is she Jewish? Nah. Yeah, her name is Ginsburg, asshole. She's got to be right. Yes. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? I just about? saw the beak. I didn't know. I've never looked into her fucking history. Her last name is Ginsburg. Like there's there's instances. There are zero <laughs> percent. There are zero people on Earth named Ginsburg who are not Jews. I there's there's got to be one. Well, there's one Goldberg that's not a Jew. That's true. It's Whoopi. Well, her mom changed I you were going to, to uh, the wrestler. No, 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 no. Okay. His, his, uh, he's Jewish. Is he really? Yeah, fucking Bill. His real name is Goldberg. He's Jewish. I just thought it was a fun name no. that he came up with. Nobody would choose a Jewish name to go into wrestling. You never. Maybe know. if he was an actor. Goldberg sounds like, hey, dude, I can fight through an iceberg. You yeah. know, it's kind of like gold and an iceberg. But look at Clinton's face one more time. Look at that. Oh. Oh, oh, man, I wish I would have picked a hotter one. It smells like hot dogs in here. Man, I bet you, I bet you that beef's got some dust on it. Oh, I bet Bob, you. Bob, who, who would you there. pick? You come from a family of. Sandra Day O'Connor. Bob learned, is a learned Sandra Day O'Connor. Legal scholars. Uh, you know, I'm kind of, uh, I've always been a fan of uh, <clears throat> Antonin Scalia's uh, strict constructionism. So I kind of feel like he might have a micro. He, I know. He probably to be on, doesn't thinking. he seem like. Yeah, well, he's, he's dead now. He's dead now, but I bet. I, I bet. I kind of want to see. Like I go, I go inverse, right? Yeah, like, like I freak show, gnarly yeah. shit. No, yeah. I get it. That, well, that's kind of where I was going with Thurgood Marshall. I just feel like he had the biggest hog. So do I. I like I, I want to see. I'm with I, you. I, I, there's, I can go on the internet right now, and find people to see naked, see women naked within hours, right? Yeah. Like, like actual human, naked human people right in front sure. of my face. Um, what I can't see is an historically large cock. Attached to a man who made history himself, right? And not with his cock. That's two things. Like, would you rather bang some random fucking stripper or go to the Great Wall of China? Oof, that's going to be stripper all day long. Nah. I don't really want to see the wall in China. Uh, well, no desire. Pick, pick any fucking wonder of the world that you might want to see. I would. Uh, so I like Niagara Falls a lot. I would definitely see that over a stripper. But that's I, kind of it. I think you that, could. What's that thing in India? The Taj Mahal? Yeah, zero desire. God, I can smell I don't think I can you can really even get India. up there anymore. I can smell India in this room, and I've, I've never been there, but I know what it smells like. If you were going to f- fuck a stripper at any of the wonders of the world, I think... The Niagara Falls is I think that'd cold. be the No, I think that would be the place. I'd go pyramids. Because then you can... It's hot outside. We're sweating. I don't want that. Because you you're going to get... You can grip a pyramid, dude, and just... You got something to hold on to. You're going to get murdered by the Egyptians if you do that, though. They take that shit seriously. Not if I'm playing that Bengals song. Here's how seriously they take it. 600 feet away, yeah. there's a KFC. A pizza, it's a pizza hut. Pizza it's hut. A dine-in, it's a dine-in pizza hut. That's how seriously they take it. So I wouldn't fuck, fuck. around there. Uh, let me change and, my and answer. Also, I mean, like it's, it's easy to dig in the desert. So I'm, just t- I'm thinking about getting rid of the stripper afterwards. Okay. Niagara Falls, you just... Yeah, body right And you'll over. never see that again. No, you never will. But I'll say this, if you are going to have sex, imagine banging a, a stripper up against the, the glass inside the Pizza Hut. So you're, you've got a nice visual, right? It's it, like you're going doggy, mm-hmm. so that way both you guys can look at the pyramids uh, together while you're, you're having uh, just a nice stuffed crust. Yeah, it'd be a cool establishing shot for the guy outside filming, too. It'd be great. Like you start off on the pyramids, and you just like... Whoosh, Flip around Boom. and there's two people just getting like a nipple. Pre- yeah, a, a nice whip it. pan in, and then all of a sudden, dude, it would be a blast. Last one to look up, Bob. Look up a young Sandra Day O'Connor. I want to see that Sandy beef. 
she looks she looks good for. I, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking in my mind. I don't want to leave her off the list today. Yeah, just look at the wedding photo. It's look not bad. That. Yeah, but when did she become a judge? Because that's where we're going from. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's let's see her sworn in because that's a young. Got a bit of an overbite there. You got to be careful. Well, putting your wiener in her mouth. that's gonna happen there from time to time. I'm sure she worked it out. I think this is maybe her Senate hearing. Oh boy. Yeah, this is what happens. They age. I know. Is that Ron dude. Paul I, so over maybe, her right shoulder? All right, now probably. that I now that I've got all the facts here in front of me, I'll go with D'Anthony. It's probably Amy Coney Barrett then at this point. This woman made history uh, by, by doing what? Being the first female Scottish judge. Yeah, but that's only one thing. That's only one thing. Like if she had made history and had something special about her. Yeah. Like a giant hog, like fucking homeboy. Exactly. Had. Um, you know, if she's in a fucking wheelchair, she was a full fucking quad. Well, not a quad, but, but if she was a para, that would she would jump up my list a little bit. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. the the wheelchair is going in bed with you. Or if she had murdered somebody, something like that, right? Like <laughs> a home Bush. invasion, and she took him out. Then, oh shit! Then you're like in the top five for sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll side with you. Third good marshal <laughs> men, and I'll go Amy Coney Barrett women. And uh, case closed. Uh, Sponsor-wise, next up, we got MyBookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros doubles that first deposit all the way up to $1,000. March Madness is here. It has started. It has begun. Dookie knees. First upset of the day. Called that here on the old program. Uh, I love it. Um, but I also uh, want you guys to, uh, to understand what you're dealing with if you're betting on these games. Because there is a lot of upsets in the first and second round in particular here. Bob, this is one that uh, our listeners pointed out, and I, I really wanted to bring it to your attention here. Um, this is a disturbing bracket trend. Uh, read it off to the audience, please. Yeah, so <clears throat> someone on the college basketball subreddit figured this out. So in the last three years, a uh, penis or whatever themed team has uh, – claimed a victim who has made an upset in the first round a and they uh they've defeated either a one or a two seed in the first round in 2021 your ohio state buckeyes fell yep. to oral roberts i was watching that game i had money on that game um and then luckily oral roberts i think went to like the elite eight that year they had a good run yeah they had a very good run and they had a good run the next year so nobody remembers it and i'm i'm amped about that but yes that is uh, oral roberts and they're known for oh 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 What's the next one? Uh, St. Peter's. We all yeah. remember the Peacocks. So got a couple really in that one. Uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. Defeated Kentucky in the first round. Two seed Kentucky. That was a crazy one to me, man, because that, that, that Kentucky team was so fucking good that I was shocked by that one. Uh, but it is St. Peter's. And if you're betting on uh, penises, guys, St. Peter's is back in the tourney this year. As a 15 seed again. Sure are. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then last year, Fairlay Dick Inson yeah. defeated Purdue. Dick in son. Dick in son, too, which is also a pedophile thing. So watch you know, out. It's, there's, it doesn't say how old the son is. Yeah. Uh, that's true. And they're not a two or a one, but Illinois currently on upset alert at halftime. Oh Only up one against Moorhead State. Wow, <laughs> dude. Wow. Now, Bob, uh, do you want to tell them who's in the tournament this year who's got a penis sound uh, or, or a nickname there? So there's two. I mentioned St. Peter's is sure back did. as a 15 seed playing Tennessee. And then Houston, my pick to win it all, is facing Longwood. Longwood Long will Wood. upset Houston. I'm calling it right now. Longwood. You're not stopping a Longwood in the tourney. I don't think so. I wouldn't, but somebody's going to, somebody's got to do it. This has been going on now for three years. The Arizona game just finished and they won by 20. Yes. So. It's gone Arizona I'm today. I'm four, four for four at the moment. Uh, I'm currently leading uh, DB Sports right now. Uh, the whole entire you're not bracket. Ahead of, you're not ahead of me. Because I've I got am, a perfect dude. one too. Uh, we'll find out. If I have it, do I have it up here today? God, there's so many fucking tabs open on my computer. Uh, yeah, here we go. Um, by the way, you can – oh, you can't do it now. It's too late. It's fucking closed. But we – in Drinking Bros Sports, um, subscribe to that podcast as well. We went over all of our picks. Let's see the standings here. Uh, we did it earlier in Ross Patterson Revolution tomorrow. And uh, let's see these standings. Ross Angeles 3000 is in first place. 
Uh, Dickie's gone. Yeah, with this, everybody's in first place. No. There's, What's your name? Uh, it's my f- actual name. One, oh, two, Drinker Bros. Dan Holloway. Yes, you're tied four, with me. Five, you six, are tied with me seven, for first place. Eight, nine, and ten. then there's a bunch. There's a shit ton of losers here. Lusticles is a loser. Um, he's way down here. Hunter's Crack Pipe is also a big, big loser today. Uh, Nick Piercy, sorry about what's happening this to your like brackets. Saying you won the golf tournament after three holes. Hey, we've only got three holes to judge on, bro. Only have three holes to judge on. Wait, I also have, said that in college. Don't you have Illinois in the Final Four? Uh, I've got them in the Elite Eight, okay. actually. Well, yeah. They're only up one on Moorhead State right now. Look. Everybody first, got started slow. Everybody though, starts time. slow. It's how you finish. And I have Moorhead State to win that game. Well, we'll find out if they do. Um, you had <laughs> – uh, who'd you have earlier? By, BYU. Yeah, BYU. Yeah, and they 16. lost. Yeah, they lost. A lot of people How did. Many, you, you think you're going to have a perfect first round? You're uh, fucking not. You're, right, I'm like, perfect you're right not. now. Uh, guys, all we can judge on is what is happening now. And right now I'm I've perfect. I've never been a bigger Moorhead There's State nothing pick. I can do about being perfect right now, okay? God damn, you're going to give me a complex about being fucking perfect all day? You sons of bitches, man. I'm perfect right now. Just wait. God damn it, it's hard. It is hard to be perfect every second of the day, but I am right now, guys, and there's nothing I can do about that. Shit. Next up, How Politicians Get Rich, starring Adam Kinzinger. Bob, pull up that Twitter link, would you? Pull it up, our good buddy Adam Kinzinger here is going to show you how to get rich while you're in Congress. Now, this is from a Twitter user, Village Crazy Lady. Oh, yeah. Big fan of her work. Village I don't know who that is. with no A. Don't know who that is, actually. So, um, <clears throat> we're also not going to suggest that only Adam Kinzinger has done this because I'm sure it's common. This is just... Very common. Actually, it, um, ordinary there was, swamp behavior. I, I believe I was listening to uh, Andrew Schultz's show the other day, and they went through the list. Uh, it was either Schultz or Theo Vaughn, I forget. Uh, but they went through the list of all the politicians. It was nuts, dude. Uh, but read this one. L- the list of what are you talking about? Uh, just politicians who are, who are just getting rich. Mm. I mean, okay. It's fucking gnarly. Um, so if you've ever wanted, this is from, uh, from Village Crazy Lady. Um, if you've ever wondered. What becomes of socially awkward politicians with no marketable skills aside from crying on cue when they're gerrymandered out of public office? Uh, Or if you've wondered what they do with all their money. Because you've asked me about this before, about campaign chess, war chess. Correct. Where it goes afterwards. Yeah. So uh, prior to the uh, finding fame during J6 bullshit, which he lied about constantly, right? Yep. And then he and uh, Liz Cheney, we found recently, have actually suppressed exculpatory evidence, which is, you know, it's the left. That's what they do. Sure. Um, he co-authored pieces of legislation uh, like Countering Propaganda and Disinformation Act um, aimed at stopping Russia and interference in our... That, that's the only bill I think that he's ever been on. Like, major bill was to stop Russian and, and Russian collusion. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, at any rate, so his fundraising efforts were pretty marginal for a congressman, but that's not an insult to him necessarily. He was in a very small district in Northern Illinois, which is not a heavily populated area anyway. So it doesn't cost that much money to win there, frankly. Um, he raised, let's see, he never raised more than 2.45 million in any given season uh, across all of his campaign committees. And he never spent more than 2.53 million in any campaign. Okay. Now to, uh, I, I think you could balance this with uh a bigger market like AOC probably spent twenty five or thirty million. I don't even know to Jesus be honest. Christ. Like they, she she raised a lot of money, and um, she's also famous. She's yeah, very she, famous. she's famous. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> uh, you know, as we all know, uh, America changed forever on that fateful day in January. Yeah, sure did, didn't it? And we'll never recover. Um, never we forget. actually, it, it was six Pearl Harbors and and a and a nine eleven and a half. Is what that came is out. Is that to. what we're up to? Yeah, now? I think so. Shit. Um, so, blah blah blah. Illinois announces they're redistricting. He knows that he can't win anymore, but it wasn't because of redistricting. It was because he's a not Republican, right? Right. right. He's a, he's been a Democrat shill the whole, his whole career. So normally that'd be the end of the story. K Street doesn't like to go. K Street being the lo- K Street and DC is where all the lobbying firms are. So anytime anybody refers to K Street, they mean lobbyists. Uh, usually they don't 
waste their time or money on washed up politicians. It doesn't make any sense. Unless you're going to become head of the uh, RNC or something like that, go on and take another position in the party. But things got really lucrative for Adam Kensinger in 2022 after he announced he wasn't going to run again. I don't know why you would continue raising money when you're not running again. You've already stated that. But he tripled his previous record, raising $6.7 million across all committees uh, when he wasn't even running for election. So no I, shit. Very bizarre. So and what does one do with that money, that much money? That's a good question, yeah. So <clears throat> uh, despite raising $6.7 million for the 2022 cycle, he only gave about – usually what you'll do is you'll spread it out around, across other candidates, send it to the RNC, to the Republican Congressional Committee, or something like that, right? Um but he only gave away 140000 of the $6.7 million. So where's the rest of it? Well, let's see. Uh, it appears you can not only bill your campaign to store your personal airplane, but you can also reimburse yourself for the miles you flew of that plane. Ah, so this is, a, this is a fun story here, kids. This is the plane that he flew to, uh, to come to my house. Yeah. He actually stayed at my fucking house yeah. when he was on the show in Drinking Bros. Now, naturally, no Republican campaign expenditure list would be complete without at least $1.5 in consulting fees to his own company. Oh, he's got his own consulting company. Are they, is he consulting himself then? Well, the question is, why did he need $1.75 mil in consulting when he wasn't running for office? That's a, yeah. that's a question, right? Yeah. Um, why did Kensinger's leadership pack buy his campaign committee a new company vehicle a month after he, a month before he left office, right? No shit. So he he funneled the money into a pack, and then he just started pay, buying himself. I think he bought himself a new airplane as well. Why not? Uh, put like paid for. Our, he reimbursed himself for the mileage and gas on it. No he way. fucking for the storage. Uh, then he bought himself a new car. Look at that. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah. So. Um, the other campaign car Kensinger had before, the one he bought prior. Um, Does it say what kind of car he had? Let's see. He has something campaign nice. Vehicle. Did he know. get a Kia? No, it was like 30000 bucks. It was 30000 bucks. But nobody knows where that car is now. So because he had one, he had a company vehicle already, then he bought another one. Uh, and then there's clubs, not golf, like DC clubs, like. Um, like nightclubs? Like, no, no, no. So the Capitol Hill Club. Okay, what's that? It's a club in D.C. Like the, the politicians belong. Like Pol- a nice steakhouse, maybe cigars. Like a men's club, yeah, kind of, but not for men. Um, then there was the former members of Congress Club. Um, and then 65000 in uh, membership dues to private clubs. So he, he took the money that he raised when he wasn't running funneled him into his pack, and then he paid $25,000 to get into the Capitol Hill Club, 40000 to get into the former members of Congress Club, and then 65000 total for private clubs that aren't reported. Great. Um, okay. So <sighs> clearly he was living it up in his last year in office, but what happened next? Well, despite the wild spending sprees, uh, Kensinger still had uh, $3.344 million in his war chest when he left office. Um, so where he, does that go? Well, you know. Uh, let's do they see. not do any? Uh, and I'm asking, uh, um, like being genuine here. Do they not do accounting? And then he has do, to, do you have a certain has, amount of time to give as it to a, somebody else? As a candidate and as a PAC, you have to file FEC reports. Yes. So is it still just sitting in a bank account? Uh, well, first step when leaving office with a $2.4 million in his principal campaign committee was he, he put it into a new PAC, started a new PAC. Right, okay. and put all the money in there. Put two million dollars into that one, and then uh, two hundred fifty thousand into his other one, and then he gave again one hundred fifty thousand or so to random other politicians. Uh, now the money, once it tr- is transferred into that pack, uh, is not subject to campaign committee rules. It's pack. It's a it's an information campaign now instead of a political campaign, right? Which means he can do whatever the fuck he wants to with it. You're kidding! Mm-hmm. God damn! I but that doesn't mean there won't be expenses. $21,000 in airfare mileage reimbursements in 2022. In his own plane? On top of the $60,000 in regular airfare, right? Ah, gotcha. And in, in commercial flight. Yeah. Uh, the $16,000 in quote-unquote travel expenses, which is, you know, consultants. Some uh, Fannie Willis shit. Um, yeah, and then then he converted his pack from a 501c3 to a c4 which means he doesn't have to do any reporting anymore essentially. God damn um, it. So essentially he 
he transferred 415000 into the uh, Country First Foundation, another 350000 or so into some entity called Country First Action Committee uh, that uses the same mailing address. And, uh, but they're registered separately with the IRS, which is weird, right? Ah, um, I see. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, let's see. GuideStar has a profile for the, for the PAC, which is how we know that Mr. Kensinger chose Austin Weatherford to run it. Who's Austin Weatherford? Well, he's the former chief of staff of Kensinger, but more importantly, according to his own website, Weatherford played a key role in producing, editing, scripting, and advising on the televised hearing of the U.S. House Select Committee on the January 6th attack. No way! Um, you don't say. God yeah. damn it. Bob, save this thread for me here, because after you know all of this is done... I might end up running just so I can yeah. fucking do this shit. It seems pretty fucking lucrative. I'm gonna be real, and uh, I'm very good with people. So and all constituents. that, all that crying on television, all the lies he told during the J6 committee shit, all the, all that bullshit was just about raising money that he could put into his own fucking pocket on the way out the door. That's who you're dealing with, with Adam Kendiger, and God. it's not uncommon. No, I'm sure it happens with, with a, a ton of politicians. I just wanted the answer. I'm glad we have it now. Because I was like, why the fuck is he doing it? Take a, a CNN gig, for example, if you're a correspondent or whatever. It's not really more than like 150 a year. You know what I'm saying? So even that's not going to be the fun, flirty paycheck. That'll get you the PJs and, uh, and the CZs and all that stuff you want to you wanna party with. This makes more sense. God damn, dude. See, if I was the FEC and I gave a fuck about the country at all, I would look into where all that money came from. Those private donations and corporate donations to him. Are they actual human beings? Are they actual people? Or did K Street fucking set up a bunch of fake names and put and push money to him, right? I, I it's, think it's gonna be a combination of both because ordinary people weren't giving him money like I, that. I think it's the left though. That's my guess. <clears throat> I think there were there were probably real people, but they were Democrats and, and I think there was probably um, a bond or a little pact beforehand that just said, Hey dude, I'm the one that's gonna be on TV for this J six shit for the, the Republican Party. Do you want to pay me to do it? And I'll, I'll do it, but uh, you got to really line my pockets here. And then I'll go on TV. I can cry on cue, um, and I can look real fucking sad in, in front of America, and I'll be the representative from the Republican side. I'm using air quotes on Republican there uh, with Liz Cheney. That way, it seems like, well, we're concerned about our own party, which she doesn't give a shit about. Mm -hmm. That's my guess. So the, I bet you they are real. I bet you it's coming from the left. And uh, yeah, right, that makes sense. When you say the left, though, what does that mean? Like Democrats. I why, why would the average Democratic voter give him money when they know he's not running for office again? Because if that doesn't make any sense. If he's willing to go on television, because if you look at the timeline, <laughs> I believe the J6 shit was after he was gone, right? It was after he was he had announced he wasn't running again. Right. No. So uh, that's my uh, uh, hey, I'll go on TV. I'll make the Republicans look like fucking morons. Um, just give me some cash and but I'll who, do it. But who was he saying that to? I bet you behind the scenes, uh, they go to those those other Democratic PACs and donors or, or whatever, and they're like, hey, man, can you raise this cash? Go talk to your people and then shift that into my account. I'm good. I'll go on TV and cry. I'll go... I for what is it six but, million but, dollars? But for the... Yeah, but... I'll, for, I'll cry right now for six but, million dollars. But for the FEC filing... There's a there's a maximum you can give to one candidate. I think it's like twenty four hundred dollars or something like that. If you can find all these people to to rig an election, you can easily find people to to get fucking weird money from Maybe. all the time. Maybe the time. I I think state campaigns like Congress and Senate, uh, it should be illegal to take money from outside the state. I agree, but. They don't give a shit. No, certainly not. Uh, yeah, but fi go find that thread if you're interested in it and, wa and read through it. It's Bob, bookmark that for me so I can <clears throat> I can have a, a guide for later on in life. I would say that is not an aber aberration. I think that's probably the standard for politicians. Yeah, but I, I'll I'll throw a fake Southern accent on. I'm not leaving the South. You know, I'll, I'll eventually move out of Texas, but I'll stay in the South somewhere and I'll use that fake accent. Everywhere I go and all of my rallies. What fake, fake accent? Uh, uh, my constituents, uh, I am concerned with the State of the Union right now. And I'll get a little bottom of all your problems, but I'm going to need $6.3 million to do it. Like, I want to really play up and live in the You're character. not going to go uh, Buford? Uh, no, because I'll be older at that point. 
So like at that point, it's more of a Colonel Sanders mm. uh, kind of foghorn leghorn type of vibe. I'd still use the. I'd still use repube. Repube. I'm yeah. still gonna use repube, but I'll be older at that point. And my voice will be a little bit more refined, uh, like the gentleman I am. And that's where that's where I kind of want to live in that. Uh, next up, sponsor wise, we got Nocturne Industries. D'Anthony, tell us about it. Uh, well, they make night vision goggles. Sure do. Nocturne, like nocturnal. Yep. Get it? You can see the uh, AOC's heavies from miles away there yeah. at so, night. Uh, they make um, that. What they actually make is the uh, the housing for it, right? So tubes only come from three places, I think. L three, Photonis, and there's one other one that they come from. Um, so they, they have the same tubes that everybody else does. And I, w- I would pay close attention to what kind of tubes you want, by the way, because some are cheaper than others, and it really depends on what you're looking for. Like if you're going to be uh, down in caves with no light around you, you want a certain type. If you're going to be using them primarily outdoors under uh, moonlight and, and starlight, you want something else. But anyways, they focus on bringing market innovative and lightweight and user-optimized and reliable night vision devices and night vision accessories. Uh, Nocturne products are developed from the ground up with the end user in mind, focusing on the needs of the modern night fighter. <clears throat> uh, their products are made in all, all made in America, uh, designed, built, tested up in, in the Shire, New Hampshire. You remember these guys from the show? They are. Uh, they're definitely from the Shire. You can tell. The by Night Vision about. Bros was the name yeah. of that episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're great. So <sighs> use the code Drinking Bros for fifteen percent off any housings or any of their other peripherals. Uh, like counterweights and batteries, all that shit. It's a huge savings. Uh, it is a, it's a, it's, you can save quite a bit of money, yeah. Um, and it's the lightest pair of night vision. So they have a new one that is, they've, they've changed from their old style to an injection mold for the polymer. And the whole system, including the tubes, weighs 12 ounces. Pop it that's, up on screen. It's that's, super light. When, they, when these guys were here. For the, for the binos. Yeah. The katanas right there on the left. Yeah. It's 12 ounces. I mean, it's like, uh, uh, le- it's three quarters of a pound for that whole fucking rig on your head. Which, w- if you've ever worn night vision on your head before for any amount of time or a helmet or anything like that, you know that uh, the the less it weighs, the better. Yep. And usually they're heavy as shit. It also um, the uh, the mount they use uh, the the tubes will slide to one side or the other. So when you put them back on your head, instead of them being centered like this and put making it heavy right here, it moves over to outside of the crown of your head. Mm-hmm. It's a really good design. They're the only ones doing it. Uh, hit them with that website one more time there. Uh, yeah, it's nocturneindustries.com, I believe. And uh, promo code Drinking Bros. Yeah, 15% off all housings and other peripherals. That's a big boy savings yep. over there. Three quarters of a pound. That's the weight of one of my balls. Yeah. I was able to weigh it the other night. Is that full or empty? Uh, that was full that night. Um, yeah, wife was out of town, so it was a full ball. Um, also using uh, one of my ch- my, ch- my children's scales. They had a really you know nice scale for for a cause. I had to wait till they were out of town, obviously, and then I, I wiped it off. I, I use one of those ball uh, grease on there. I use one of those uh, uh, ones for weighing your luggage. Oh, do you really? Yeah, that's nice. Just hold it up in your hand, drop one ball in. Just drop one ball in, dude. Yeah. Three quarters of a pound. Uh, next up, the DOJ sues Apple. The Department of Justice sued Apple on Thursday, saying its iPhone ecosystem is a monopoly that drove its astronomical valuation at the expense of consumers, developers, and rival phone makers. The lawsuit claims that Apple's anti-competitive practices extend beyond the iPhone and Apple Watch businesses, citing Apple's advertising uh, browser, FaceTime, and news offerings. Each step in Apple's course of conduct built and reinforced the moat around its smartphone monopoly, says the suit filed by the DOJ and 16 attorney uh, generals in New Jersey federal court. Apple shares fell over 2% during trading on Thursday. Oh, no. Uh, the Justice Department said in a release uh, that to keep consumers buying iPhones, Apple moved to block cross-platform messaging apps, limited third-party wallets, and smartwatch compatibility, and disrupted non-app store programs and cloud streaming services. The challenge represents a significant risk to Apple's walled garden business model. The company says that complying with regulation uh, costs the company money, uh, could prevent it from introducing new products or services, and could hurt 
customer demands. The lawsuit could force Apple to make changes in some of its most valuable businesses. Uh, the iPhone, in which uh, Apple reported over $200 billion in sales in 2023. The Apple iWatch and uh, part of the company's $40 billion in uh, wearables businesses. And its profitable service line, which reportedly uh, made $85 billion in revenue. Yeah. What do you make of this? Um, it's we th so these circumstances have existed for 15 years. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of weird that this is the first. It's not the first we're hearing about it, but it's the first time the government has ever taken any kind of serious approach to trying to quote unquote break up the monopoly. Um, <clears throat> I don't think the government has the right to tell companies what they should or shouldn't do. I and monopoly laws make a better fucking product, asshole. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, oh, I can't, I can't do what they're doing and steal their market share because they're too good at it. Is that, that's your fucking complaint? And now you want the state to come in and get involved in it? Like, that's gay as hell, man. I you're, you're a weak little bitch if you think that way. Now, on the other hand, Apple saying that it can't afford to do this stuff, they, 97 billion in net revenue last year, mm -hmm. 97 billion profit. Just last year. Just last year. So we're fucking relax. All right, you can handle it. They're worth over one trillion dollars, I believe. It's the first company. Well, they did uh, three hundred eighty-three billion in total revenue last year. A company like that would have uh, probably somebody that owns proprietary tech like that is probably a ten multiplier on EBITDA somewhere like that. So you're talking about three, four trillion dollars in in evaluation, not market cap, in valuation, right. right? Like if if somebody were to sell it, but it's a publicly traded company, so I don't know what. The real, the actual value of, of uh, Apple is probably in the fifteen to twenty five trillion range, to be honest. Yeah, right? and and as far as this is concerned, so here's my opinion on it. As soon as I saw this headline, um, it felt to me like a uh, a campaign thing. Biden will fight big tech. See, he's doing stuff against big tech. It's not just the right because there is that lawsuit. Is that out of Missouri? Mm -hmm. um, uh, that the Republicans filed here. And this, I think this is Biden's attempt to be like, no, man, I, I care about big tech too. Um, no, you don't. And I'm with you on this. With In regards to Apple, build a better fucking product. Mm -hmm. What do we have against it? The Android? Uh, now, the Android, in my opinion, takes better pictures. Um, and that's about it. Everything uh, else is, is a green text. Yeah. And it's fucking hard to use. Uh, Apple's not selling phones. They're selling connectivity. Yeah. Right. They're selling a marketplace. Well, as as they mentioned, they're selling a uh, a, a specific kind of uh, walled garden business, right? Where it's like all of this, we're selling. It's a place to come, and you can get everything you need, right? Correct. It's Walmart, but for the, in the digital space, I guess you could call it. Do it better. That's it. Or shut the fuck up, dude. That's all. Like seriously, when your competitor is Google, who is the biggest company in the world, right? Like Apple's not the biggest company. Google is. Yeah. Right. And you still can't beat them. And now you're crying about it? And by, and, by and the way, fucking filing lawsuits and shit? Like, fuck off, man. Google has a phone, Bob. You can pop this up. They've got a couple different versions of it. Um, is it the Pixel? Is that what yeah. it's called? The Google Pixel phone? Honestly, my uh, opinion of this is. Oh, I'm wrong about that, actually. Microsoft is still the largest company in the world. Oh, God. well, because AI. of AI. AI. Um, oh, that's uh, open AI shit, dude. Yeah, they're fucking massive right now. Three trillion. They just overtook <laughs> it. Yeah. Good Lord. Is that it right there? Is that the Google Pixel? Yeah, and honestly, you know what I really think about? It? I, I, my guess is, is that the iPhone is probably not really much better than this, if better than this at all, but iMessage That's not what you're buying when you buy that's an That's not iPhone. what you're buying. You're buying iMessage. And so, yeah. so I'm, I'm with you, Bob. I, I think the same thing, um, but this stupid fucking thing, because I have one, and I don't, I, don't, I don't like it, so I don't really give a shit. Um, with this stupid goddamn thing, it's the, it's the connectivity to all the other shit that we have. The fucking iMac, the goddamn watch is superior to everybody else's watches. All of it and their apps and everything else they're giving you. The Apple Pay is super easy. All that shit is just easier. Therefore, I own all these See, devices. I don't even think that most of that other stuff is easier. I think it's almost entirely iMessage. Like you think I, so? The texting. I, so the number I've, one thing you do with your phone. Uh, text, porn. <laughs> porn. Text and porn. It's. I mean, it's text. I text for, porn to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, there, it's probably not a close second to texting. There's probably not a close second. Yeah. Maybe taking pictures. So, like, really I, I'll, I'll give them the pictures. I think the the Google pictures are always better. Whenever whenever we're out and somebody has one, I'm like, oh goddamn. But I'm just why is like, your picture so much better than mine? If you got a Google Pixel, probably 
nothing about it would change your life except the text messaging. Yeah, uh, it's it maybe you're right, and maybe I'm just used to iPhones for so many fucking years. Dude, um, I, the I only thing that I will say, and this will go back to uh, Bubalinski, is there was a period of time where everybody had a BlackBerry and they refused to give up the goddamn BlackBerry, and it was only because it made texting easier because they had the rubber buttons on it. BBM. Yep. BlackBerry Messenger. Yep. So. Yeah, I mean, but with that, create something else. I'm with Dan, create something else that will have more sales. Are these phones probably pretty similar? Yeah, why do you want, why is, the, why is it the government's job to get involved and, and tell some shittier company to say, hey, make better products? Like, fuck off, dude. Just beat them, that's it. Just beat Apple if you wanna do it. Um, you think I fucking bitch about White Claw and their prices being able to be $15.99? No, I'm trying to become them. Like, that's it. At the, that's the end of the story. I'm not going to cry and go to the government and say, oh, fuck, man, I can't drop my prices the same way. They have, they have more money than me. And it won't, it won't even work either. No. Right? Like, no. This, this will have no net effect, net positive effect for Google or for the country, for that matter. But it'll certainly have no net effect for Google unless you consider a temporary drop in Apple stock price. A net effect? I mean, maybe, but... For the day. Yeah, it's like, it's not going to last because people, people forget it. Once they see their blue text again, they'll be like, oh, cool. And once they see how many goddamn phones they've sold mm -hmm. or watches and all that other shit, they'll be like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. I want the stock. <clears throat> but it, it's like. It's, this purely seems political, they're, like they're, a political move from Biden's part. They're do, yeah, they're doing the wrong. They're, this is the wrong tactic. If, if somebody's made like the product isn't just the phone or the iPad or the watch or any of that shit. It's the experience. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that's that's been the lesson from tech from day one. User experience is the fucking product that you're actually selling. People like this better because of the experience. So you can either try to replicate the experience or you can start something new, like other than a phone, right? Something else, another device, another piece of tech, fucking AI, whatever it is. Get into that and do this as an aside so you can capture 6 8% of the market. Yeah. Right? Or right. shut the fuck up. Exactly. Right? Those are the options. And hear me out, Google. Um, I think you should create a G boot. And what it is, it's a, it's a cowboy boot that's also a phone. And that way people can text with their toes. So then they can use their eyes for other shit all day long. Plus we're teaching people to, to use their feet more. And that's fun. I think that's a, a healthy exercise. And uh, just think about the G-boot. I'm going to leave that to you. I think they should I'm not going to trademark it. I think they should make the best sex robot ever. Well... And it's got to be around the corner. Have man. the drill dough, whatever, whatever that, what's that thing called? The, the dilotherm? Yeah, is it back? it's back. Yeah, it's in that case right there. Yeah, yeah the dilotherm. Um, something like that. Like, make something that people want. Just make a fucking drill dough, you know? God damn, how hard is that out there? I'm sure Apple's probably going to make a better one, though. Uh, well, they'll make one that, that sprays blue cum <laughs> on you. Not green. Instead of green, yeah. <laughs> Don't they have the patent on the blue color for Texas, too? I don't think anybody else is allowed to have one. Bob, do not show that picture on, on camera. All right? That's a man's penis. Well, not really. Is that a fake man? Don't yeah. even show it. We can't show the fake man. No, that looks too real. Can't. Is that a sex doll man? Yeah. Is that a sex man doll? Yep. That's Arnold the It second. says 5'11", male sex doll. Arnold. Arnold That's two. actually on Arnold 2. We don't know, yeah, we don't we know, know what, what Arnold, Arnold 1 looks like. like. Yeah. I hope he was at least taller than... A lot of different versions. It looks like Dan Bilzerian. It does, man. Except for Dan Bilzerian is like five foot seven. Yeah, so. they beefed up his height a little bit. Uh, last but not least, here we got the elderly student loans. This story shocked my mind when I read this. Yeah, this is weird. It is, man. Millions of older Americans are at risk of losing uh, some of their Social Security benefits after defaulting on student loans. Democratic lawmakers said in a letter urging the Biden administration to act that seniors are one of the highest risk categories with reports showing that nearly 40% of borrowers age 65 or older uh, are in default. Federal programs that claw those funds back mean seniors lose as much as 2,500 in social security benefits annually, which is a lot of fucking money, dude, for a senior. Mm -hmm. uh, more than 3.5 million Americans. I mean, that's a, that's a full month, if not more, worth of expenses. Fuck yeah, right? dude. For a, for a typical like senior citizen. Absolutely. Uh, more than 3.5 million Americans at or above age of 60 hold student debt. I mean, I just can't believe it, dude. Above 60. Uh, collectively amounting to over $125 billion. 
uh, per 2023 that data. Num- that number is also shocking. I'm sh- that that shit. There's 125 billion in outstanding student loan debt for Americans 60 years old or older. 65. Like, did they? What what I happened? 60. You're right. What happened? Did God, they damn. go back to school as adults? Certainly, the, there's no way it's from back in the day. Maybe right? it was, and maybe with inflation, it all kind of ticked up. <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe they had deferments or something, but like school didn't cost that much back then. It isn't like now. Uh, unless no. it's graduate school or something, maybe. Yeah, maybe yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like it could be graduate school so or something. So if there's but... 60, let's just say it's a 60 year old, 40 years ago is what, 1984? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not, it's not as long ago as it feels, I guess. That's true. I didn't, I didn't even think about that. Um, you're right. Um, but it's still a shocking not number. Not even 40 years ago, because if it's graduate school, it's more like 35 years ago. But didn't fucking Biden sign off that uh, student debt thing? The average uh, undergraduate tuition, including room and board in 1984-85, was $4,500 a year. Yeah, but I so I read something the other day. I forget where it was from, but it's kind of eighteen thousand dollars total. Yeah, right for a for an undergraduate degree. Yeah, yeah, but undergraduate degree is not really what's driving the the student loan crisis. No, well, yeah, that's because people get undergraduate degrees and then they go get jobs. Right. People with graduate degrees in fucking physics of the frisbee and shit like that. Right. It's like, oh, man, I've been studying the back hair of the Cambodian camel spider. Yeah. All right. And I can't find a fucking job doing it. You know what you should do is wrap your mouth around a shotgun. <laughs> Cobain style? Well, I didn't say that. I, I will. I will. Or that, that dear, dear porn star we lost the other day. She, uh, she did the same thing, put a shotgun in her mouth. Yeah, that's too bad. It um, is. I'm trying to find what a graduate degree would have costed, let's say, in the 90s. Okay. Uh, $5,900 a year for two years. Mm. I mean that adds up though. I mean we got so by the by the late the country. by the late nineties, it was like a lot higher, a yeah. lot higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the late nineties is when the really, really superfluous graduate degrees yeah. started getting tossed out. Because honestly, eventually, like a medical degree or a law degree or even an MBA, like that'll pay for itself. Yeah, yeah. Over time, yeah. But, um, well, law degrees, maybe, maybe not. It depends on how you progress in the profession because right. you may end up being a forty-five thousand a year clerk for five years. Um, but the the so the program that they're talking about in this um, uh, uh, is a government program where f- up to fifteen percent of your monthly federal government benefits, like social security and disability payments, can be withheld. So your social security benefits can be withheld, something you paid into for 60 years, right? Like yeah. 40 years, at least 40 years, right? If you're 60, um, can be taken away from you because of your student loan debt. God damn. Now, dude. that's fucked up. Uh, the number of borrowers age 60 or above has grown sixfold since 2004. Now, those are people aging into that, obviously, right? Sure. Um, but didn't Biden give that fucking student loan forgiveness thing? For some people, for federal debts, yeah. Not for old people? <clears throat> all the, these old heads, they were like, fuck off? I guess off. not, yeah. The, uh, the people that actually vote, you mean? Yeah. Um, no. The think tank also found the outstanding debt of those 60 years and older has increased 19 times. So the, the total number of people, the total number of borrowers has inclu- increased by six. The, the amount of debt itself has increased by 19, right? So... Part of me is not unhappy that a bunch of old dumbass hippies are now fucked. Fuck them. You know what I mean? Like you got you you really thought the world owed you a career and some stupid bullshit, and you fucking went out there. You didn't spend any of your own money on it. No. You didn't take any real risk. Well, we did. Yeah. And now you're gonna pay for it. Yeah, there it is. So Time to pay fucked. the piper. But I think Biden will fucking come in and handle this. I'm they'll, sure. they'll probably commute all this debt because he's old as shit. So like he's gonna look yeah. after his own. <clears throat> and to be honest, it's only like 120 billion dollars. It's not that much That's money. That's it. That's what we're giving to Ukraine tomorrow. Yeah. I'm uh, sure. We didn't. We skipped uh, over the. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to it right now. Actually, speak, I just saw it, dude. Speaking of money. Speaking of money. Well, speaking of money, one also. More story if here. You're, if you're worried about all this, if them coming after your actual funds. Go to noblegoldinvestments.com slash citizen pod and buy some gold. Gold is at an all-time high. Again. It is. I saw that today. It's like every fucking three weeks it goes to an all-time high. Well, uh, there's a bunch our, of con- countries our, on the brink. Cuba yeah. is about to be yeah. overrun. Our, and our currency is going to be useless soon, too. So. Yeah. Isn't Cuba, though, like right there? Uh, yeah, they're having like widespread protests right now. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, 
what are you going to do? I mean, that happened like Cuba. two years ago, too, though. Yeah. yeah. They, they do it every couple of years. We'll um, figure it out. Uh, but yeah, the, I, the, I missed the story. I'm going to go back and do it here. Show me the money. Los Angeles Dodgers interpreter for uh, Shohei Otani was fired Wednesday afternoon after questions surrounding at least uh, $4.5 million in wire transfers sent from Otani's bank accounts to a bookmaking operation uh, that set off a series of events. Was he over at my bookie? Was he on mybookie.com? Was it, no. I, did he use the promo code Drinking Bros? So, so that, no, that, that bookmaker in LA, who are in Vegas rather, who uh, has been attached to all these fucking professional athletes. Right? Oh, that's guy? that guy. We'll get to more about that later, but continue. Yeah. Uh, so, Ipe uh, Mizuhara, I think I said that right. Uh, the longtime friend and interpreter for uh, Otani uh, incurred the gambling debts, allegedly, to a Southern California bookmaking operation that is under federal investigation, multiple sources told ESPN. How he came to lose his job uh, started with reporters asking questions about the wire transfers. Initially, a spokesman for Otani uh, told ESPN the slugger had transferred the funds to cover uh, Mizuhara. Gambling debts, the spokesman uh, presented Mizuhara to ESPN for a 90-minute interview Tuesday night, uh, during which Mizuhara laid out his accounts in great detail. However, as ES pre uh, ESPN prepared to publish the story Wednesday, the spokesman disavowed Mizuhara's account and said Otani's lawyers would issue a statement. Uh, in the course of responding to recent media inquiries, we discovered that uh, Shohei has been the victim of a massive theft, and we are turning the matter over to the authorities, uh, read the Burke Brettler LLP uh, spokesman. Uh, they declined to answer any further questions, and uh, the statement did not specify whom they believe perpetrated the alleged theft. All right, let's break this down here because I don't believe any of this fucking story. No. It's either it, – it, to be honest, I think it might be some kind of gay, gay stuff. No. Yeah. I don't think I, – I, that, I, that, that, I did not think that at all. I think there's something gay going on. You think they've been fucking? Yeah. Pop up a picture of the two of these guys. I mean, they look real chummy, but I just thought, oh, hey, he doesn't know English. So let's speak Japanese together and kind of laugh about the rest of the team. And giggle? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm not gonna go towards the gay thing. Uh, just put, pop, pop up any picture, Bob. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're too far apart, right there. Yeah. There's. I mean, just Google them, Bob. They're laughing together in the dugout, uh, playing a little grab ass in there. <laughs> at, at any rate, so um, they're always laughing like this. <sighs> no, it is a Southern California bookmaker, Matthew Boyer. Um, now, the wire transfer payments were sent from Otani's personal banking account. Yes. Right. Which means one of two things. He sent them or this fucking dumb dumb has access to his bank account. All right. So here's the picture of these guys. You're saying they're both gay. Look at Joey Otani's face and tell me he's not gay. I signed I with that. I, 2013. And that's a pleather jacket. There's a 2013 Stanford study that shows the average person can tell the difference between a straight and a gay man 83% of the time just by looking at a still shot of their face. I th Look at his face and tell me he's not gay. I think he's gay. I think he's gay. I'll side with you on this one. And, okay. the, and the interpreter, look but at his hand there. He's making a jack-off motion with his well, hands. Well, that's – you're just seeing what you want to see now. Am but, I? <clears throat> but I'll, uh, that could be of no consequence to this, right? So here are the facts that we know for sure. Um, wire transfers – for 3.5 million and then two additional for 500,000 were sent from Otani's personal bank account to this asshole. Now, the original story uh, was that homeboy Mizahari, whatever his name, the Terp, the Terp had an outstanding debt with this guy, and Otani decided to pay it off for him. That supports the gay theory because you wouldn't do that for somebody. Unless you were, unless they were sucking your hog, right? Yeah. Like they would have to be choking on that thing twenty four hours a day. Yeah. Four, four and a half million goddamn dollars. Are you kidding me? Um, your head game's got to be on point for that. Yeah. Or the more likely scenario is that he was placing proxy bets for Otani himself. Yep. That's probably what it was, right? Because there's no fucking way he's not involved. There's oh, no. Yeah. There's no way you don't give your interpreter. 
or like your even your personal assistant doesn't have the ability to send three point five million dollar wire transfers. Now you and I we send wire transfers and Every bank day. transfers all the time. Every single day. To send like twenty five or fifty K, you gotta go there in person at least once, right? You have to at least go there in person one time to establish your bona fides and, and you set up some kind of uh two-factor authentication to be able to fucking business. authorize. It's got to be in your business. Yeah, it's yeah. got to be in our business. And to authorize a wire transfer of three and a half million dollars, you go into the place to do it, or you have your financial manager do it for you, somebody yeah. that has your financial power of attorney. Now, you're asking me to believe that this guy gave his interpreter his financial power of attorney, or that his business manager is also involved, because those are the only scenarios where Shoei Otani himself was not involved in this. And the other part of this is, so just, just take the last couple days here for, for all of our businesses. I've wired roughly 75 grand over the last two days. Every single wire that I have sent, um, it, it, I get a text from the bank asking me to mm -hmm. approve it. And then I've got to enter that number into the fucking computer. And it's a whole goddamn thing. So you're going to say his bank account wasn't registered to his fucking phone number and it was registered to the interpreter? There's no fucking way any of this story checks out. Also, they'll be able to bring up his text messages for all this shit to be cleared. There's no fucking way. I think Otani, me personally, uh, the gay thing is fun and I like it, and I, but that's probably on top of it. Well, he, he, he kind of looks gambling, like a bottom, actually. Yeah, but I think he was gambling on his own games, the same as Pete Rose. And I think uh, the one word that he knows in English was a uh, pare. I want a pare tonight. And uh, I bet he was calling homie to say, hey, dude, I'm pitching today. I'm definitely going to win. I'll probably, you know, hit a couple ding dongs out of the ballpark and let's go all in here. Try to make some cash out of this. This is your classic athlete who's just gambling on everything and anything. And now he's trying to get out of it because let's face it, Pete Rose, lifetime ban, can't get in the Hall mm -hmm. of Fame because of this same exact shit. And I think this is what he's trying to avoid. Also, what do you do if you're Major League Baseball when you're one global superstar who's global? Because I don't know that there's anybody else playing baseball today that's as global as this fucking guy is right now. He's also the highest paid baseball player in the history of baseball. He's the highest paid athlete in the history of Western sports. Yes. Period. $700 million to the Dodgers. He can't go down. So Manfred behind the scenes, Rob Manfred, uh, the commissioner, has got to figure this the fuck out. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, this is going to nuke out the entire Asian market, and they don't want that to happen either on what's probably America's team, L.A. Dodgers. Yeah. I mean, he— uh, Bumsy Tuesday with the Yankees. Bob, what was it that uh, Otani added to the valuation of the Dodgers when he came over? It was like a billion and a half yeah, dollars something or something like that. Yeah, goddamn insane So if, like if that. that's just for one team, the fact that he has a—that there's a, a legit superstar Japanese presence— um, in the U.S. right now, bringing that TV audience over, you got to think that's probably five, ten billion mm -hmm. in market cap. It adds to the MLB as a fucking organization. Absolutely, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna do their best to hide this shit. Unfortunately, the guy lied first, and then they had to counter the story. This is not how I would have done it if I was trying to run this scam. Right. To be honest, right. Also worth noting, as far as the gambling. Debt goes. Uh, Mizahara only made between three hundred and five hundred thousand dollars a year. Oh, is that it? Poor yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, poor guy. So, but so I who's mean, like, taking bets from a guy? Hare. Like honestly, if you're a fucking, if if you're a Shylock or something like that, putting out putting money out on the street, or if you're a bookmaker, yeah, you'll let a guy, you'll give him enough rope to hang himself, but you won't give him so much rope that you run out of fucking rope. Right. Like a guy that makes. A quarter million dollars a year. You're not making him. You're not letting him make three and a half million dollars worth of bets. No. Unless no. you're planning on shaking down Otani after, which is possible, right? Yeah. But there's no guarantee. That's a huge risk to do something like that because Otani could have just done this. Exactly. Which is like, hey, I know I'm gay, but. And I think, look, that's I think, my opinion, by the way. I don't know that he's gay. And I, well, look, I just it, think he is. It, not now that I've seen this picture, the two of them together in the pleather and all that stuff, um, I think you know. They're fun gay buddies who are just gambling on, on each other and gambling on life. And, uh, and maybe they're taking the ultimate gamble by having a taboo relationship. Oh, I thought you meant by having unprotected anal sex. No. Because that's pretty, that's a gamble. It, not anymore. He's rich enough to beat eights. Oh, that's true, yeah. So yeah. with $700 million, yeah, dude, he's taking a fucking cocktail in the morning. Who gives a shit, dude? Let's do some AIDS. Let's throw some parades down and then just kind of figure out life and maybe have some sake afterwards. That's what seems more probable to me. Uh, but I think he did get married, though, recently. Bob, am I crazy Yeah, he this? did in a secret wedding that nobody yeah. attended. Secret. 
Who is the chick? Can we see her? Let's see this beard. Let's see his fucking beard real quick. Because Hugh Jackman finally had to shave his beard. And, uh, I mean, he just looks like a Japanese guy. That's, That's pretty racist. No, he just looks uh, Japanese. What you just said was racist. What you're insinuating just because he looks gay. He just looks like a normal Japanese dude. Boy, that's crazy. You just I'm called all of Japan gay. Yeah, I, yeah seriously, Delco, I, the, the research, we don't tolerate that. The either. research is the research, bud. You're literally just saying this because you're a Braves fan. No. I love Otani. I hope none of this is true. Like, I like watching him play baseball. I don't give a shit. I like Bryce Harper, too. I've never been a fucking homer like that. Yeah, and I, and I think if you are gambling, here's my – this is the same thing I said about Heroes. He's been on the show a few times. Um, I said, look, if you're betting on yourself – What's the fucking harm in that? Everybody should put their goddamn salaries on themselves. I like it. I'm not rooting for the downfall of this young twink um, who's secretly married to uh, this basic, he's a massive basic man. woman, and she must be massive too, because she's got to be kissing six two. She here. plays basketball. She does play basketball. No, he's he's six two. God, I nailed it. No, he's, he's six, six. I think he's six five. No, he's no, no. Dude. no, he's not that tall. Pop up his stats, Bob. I think he's six five, and then she's six two, right? He's six four. He six if, four. If it says six four listed, that means he's like six two or six three. I'm maybe. kissing no. six four. If I ever meet him eye to eye, I'll give five, you the. She's I'll probably like five eleven. Phone. She's probably five ten. She five plays 11. basketball for uh, I think Japan. Japan <laughs> for the for the nation. Uh, for the nation of you Japan. Think, eh? Man. Either way. Save this tape because when he gets caught fucking chugging semen, yep, in the Dodgers dugout somewhere or whatever happens in LA, I don't know. It's all gay over there. Uh, gonna rub it in your fucking face. Yeah, the semen. Not. She is listed at five eleven. Yeah, five eleven. Um, and I also think uh, homeboy ends up uh, Mizuhara goes out to the Japanese force and hangs himself. He's gonna fall on the sword. For, he may hear a carry. Yeah. Yeah. Open himself up. Yep. I don't, I don't. I don't think he's gonna live that much longer. Usually, you you have your butler though to cut your head off after you open up your stomach. So I don't really? know. I don't know who's gonna buttle him. Yeah. Maybe Shohei will do it for him. Well, does it, does ritualistic suicide? Is it? Can can you get? Uh, uh, can you do Kevorkian shit in California? I don't know enough about it. You can just go north to it. Oregon. They allow it. Or go to Sweden. Or go to fucking Canada. Get in that little capsule in Sweden. Yeah. And just press the button. You know, just two button presses and you're all good. Uh, now it's time for the Drinking Bro of the Week. Uh, you can send it in at drinkingbros.com while you're there. Uh, we've got merch. we got the bro box out. Right here. Oh, by the way. Before- it comes to your house exactly like this, by the way. This isn't just made for the show. This actually comes to your house. Yeah. With our dope. faces on it right in front of your goddamn uh, postman. Uh, yeah, and somebody said uh, it's weird that there aren't dicks on it. I don't know if you've seen our logo, but there's dicks all over the place. We have so just three, fucking relax. Three man. dicks in the logo itself. That was designed that yeah. way from the very, very get go. Also, before we get out of here, a third uh, person was charged with uh, murder in that Kansas City shooting. Really? Mm-hmm. A third person, yeah. Okay. Um, now, no name, just the age in this ESPN article. What do you think? Oh, boy. Yeah, you got a oh, guess? Oh, boy. He's black. Bob, black. can you can you Google Terry Young right quick? Terry with a, with a Y. Am I? I hate to be correct about this. Am I right on this or no? And ESPN didn't list a, a race there or anything. No, no, they didn't put the guy's name either. No Although shit. it is it is public information. Is it Terry Young? It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What race is it? Black. Ah, Twenty years old. Fuck. I that's how. I that's, didn't want to be right about it, but it, it was. That's how it always is. You can you can always tell. It's somebody should name a razor after this, but you can always tell if if the person's black based on whether or not their name or photo appear in the article. The media won't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. Won't do it anymore. Uh, who's back there that wants to come up for Drinking Bro of the Week? Boom. Come on up, sir. Come on up. Go to drinkingbros.com, dude. Submit for Drinking Bro of the Week. Or we'd love to just see you in the studio and then you can come and give it out live and, uh, and buy some merch, dude. It helps us, dude. I got the new flannel. On here, I'm wearing it today. Look at you, sir. You got fucking bottles, bruh. Way to go. Put that about a, you can raise it up. Yeah. Tall man like yourself, dude. What's your name? Tom. Tom. Strong name. Tom, you've killed some people, haven't you? <laughs> Not yet. Tom. You, when, the way you sat down and looked at me, was fucking dead in the eyes. I was like, this is a fucking murderer I'm talking to. Uh, where are you from? Iowa. <laughs> no way. 
a state that doesn't exist. A state that doesn't and exist. And you're a fucking murderer, too. I love it, dude. I love it. You got to do something up there. It's Iowa. I get it, man. If you're going to kill, kill in Iowa. Nobody's going to give a shit. Snow doesn't even thaw hide out. The, hide it in the corn. Yeah, it doesn't even thaw out until the end of April. So you're good there, dude. <laughs> uh, what'd you bring here? Uh, I brought you a bottle of Soldier Valley. Did you really? Is this from Iowa? Uh, it's brewed in Nebraska or made in Nebraska, but the owner, uh, his dad was born in Soldier, Iowa. Okay. And they support vets and have a lot of vets working for them and things like that. So Soldier it's pretty good stuff. Valley whiskey here, 86 proof. I like that. And my buddy Sean back there, he bought you guys a bottle of Templeton Rye. No shit. Thank I don't you, know if buddy. you've ever heard of it. It's, it was big back in during Prohibition. It was brewed in Templeton, Iowa. Uh, supposedly was the... Drink of choice by Al Capone during pro- Prohibition. Was it really? Yep. It was gone for years and years and years, and they finally started re- redoing it. That's awesome. Thank you, buddy. Uh, Ryan Mills, are you back there? Yeah, buddy. Will you open this for me? I can't figure it out. Um, I'm, I just got diagnosed as uh, mentally retarded about an hour <laughs> ago. So whatever. My doctor just texted me, and he's like, hey, somebody's going to have to open the bottles for you because uh, I can't figure it the fuck out. Um, who'd you like to give Drinking Bro of the Week to? I got a couple of uh, the wife, of course. For Is she here? No, she's not. She's back at the house. Yeah, she was like, I'm not coming to this bullshit. Yeah, and uh, just for, you know, being my wife, I guess. Yeah. And my buddy Sean, he's the one that introduced me to you guys uh, years ago. So about five years I've been listening to you guys. Raise a black power fist back there, Sean, so I can see it. There it is. Revolution. Proud of you. Yeah, I love man. you guys' show. Listen to it every day. No and way. Patreon, well worth it. Well worth it. Well, we got so much. I, so on Patreon, by the way, we have the most content out of any channel really? ever in the history of Patreon. Yeah. Because um, we have live shows there every single day. And nobody, it's everybody who comes on, they're like, holy shit. Plus, I put all those fucking movies on there. Yeah. I own the rights to most of them. So I popped them up there so everybody could watch them for free. Yeah, I listen to it during the day. Then I get home at night and watch it on Patreon. It's fucking rad, isn't it's, it? I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, I love Patreon. It's it's fucking awesome. We can get away with murder over there pretty much. Except like for, Iowa. Except for, I will say this. Uh, you guys have been asking us about the... Thank you, buddy. Um, you guys have been asking us about the fake news episode that got taken down on Monday. Apparently, there was nudity in it. I just don't remember which nudity it was. But whatever. We popped it back up, so we're yeah, good to go. Up. It's back up it's over on there. Vimeo. Yeah, so <laughs> thank, thank Delco for that. He uh, He's the one that pops it back up on Vimeo here. Uh, what's your wife's name? Danelle. Danelle. All right, I'm going to do a shot for uh, Danelle here. I'll, I'll drink straight out of the bottle. We're That's homies, fine. dude. That's fine. That's good. Who made this? What's this? Soldier Valley? Soldier Valley. Soldier Valley, dude. Way to go. Soldier Valley whiskey. I'm all about that life, dude. Thank you. God damn, that's good. God damn. Way to go. Um, well, dude, we appreciate you being here. Uh, how long are you in town for? Uh, we came in uh, last Friday. We're leaving tomorrow morning. Driving oh, back. Per- perfect timing. We This is our last show of the week. Um, we pre-recorded because we had a call with uh, TechStot, the people who were going to tear down our studio. <laughs> so, but not. We recorded the entire conversation. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to air on Monday. It's super fucked up, as always. Not that you would expect anything less. But the woman at the beginning was just like, are, are you guys are you guys broadcasting? Because they could see on the on the, the camera. And I was like, well, we'll see how it goes. Yes, we're definitely broadcasting. Well, we wanted so. to get down here while the studio was still here. Perfect. You Perfect. see it. It'll be here for another couple of years, I think. Um, yeah, you'll hear it in the thing. So we're going to try to stretch this out as well and take this to trial. Give them hell. Why not? I mean, it's because we're not... This isn't it wasn't like a cash grab for us. We, it's a, obviously a fucking gigantic place, right? <laughs> that's awesome. And we, but we, that's what we build it for is for listeners to come in, hang out, get fucked up, and everything. So it's not the mo- it's not the money. We just like the location, and we have like a million parking spaces here. So it's just <laughs> like fuck you guys, man. We actually want to be here, fucking assholes. That's how uh, it goes. Isn't we it? named it the State of Texas uh, versus the Dringer Bros Podcast, and that'll air uh, Sunday night, and then the video will be live on. On Mondays, you can actually see the people in the video, too, which is really fucking funny. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I'll so look forward to it. That'll be the show there. Uh, we're, we're off tomorrow because uh, everybody's raging for, uh, for March Madness around here. We try to give people a day off here and there. Uh, who else is back there? Anybody else want to come up? Thank you. Uh, yeah. Come on up, brother. Let's go. Look at that mullet, dude. We got a mullet and a stash. Looks like a young Garner Minshew. You fucking SOB, dude. Pop on in there. 
Yeah. Tell everybody your name. Uh, Marcus. Look at you. Yep. Bet you were eating pussy an hour ago, <laughs> weren't you, Marcus? You son of a bitch. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking lie, dude. That stash was tickling somebody's vagina <laughs> about an hour ago. I love it. Where are you from? Uh, Southeast Wisconsin. All right, Wisconsin's a real yep. state. So we're about 20 minutes north of the whole Rittenhouse thing. Really? <laughs> yeah. From yep. Kenosha? Yeah. Yep. Is, that it? is that it, Kenosha? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, he was trending today, I guess. Yeah, I uh, seen something earlier when I was sitting down. He was doing a speech, I guess, at University of Memphis, and a bunch of BLM activists. They yeah, booed him off the stage or something. I just seen. Huge yeah. shock. <laughs> Don't show up at University of Memphis. Have you, have you been to Memphis? No. Holy no. shit, I have. No. And when I looked around and I realized quickly that I was the only white person uh, walking around at all the bars late at night, I uh, decided it was time for me to get the, the fuck on up out of there. Uh, and that's where Graceland is. Okay. Yeah. Not familiar. Like the whitest <laughs> fucking, okay, sure. uh, you know, location yeah. is in Memphis, the blackest city on the planet now. Um, who, who do you want to keep drinking for the week? Too? I'll give it to my now fiance. Uh, is she got, back here? Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, was that was that her with you earlier? Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. No, no. I didn't know if it was your sister or just no. like a homie. All right, it's your actual fiance? Yes. Yep. Congratulations. When yep. are you guys getting married? Uh, we haven't planned it yet. Just got engaged like, what, two and a half weeks ago or no something? No shit. Yeah. Yep. How old are you? Uh, 26. 26. Yep. So is her pussy right now. <laughs> what? I said it low. I don't think she can hear it all the way back there. I don't think she's going to know. Good for you guys. Yeah, thank did you guys fuck in the back office? No, no. That's da- did you fu- like that's where Dan records Citizen. <laughs> it's fine if you threw down in there. Do you know how many no. people have had sex at, at our studios? Oh, I've heard. Oh God, yeah. dude. Yeah. Fucking cream pie, Jessica. Remember that? She broke the fucking couch. Man, dude. Yeah, we did. We had first day in the in the studio, couch broken, <laughs> semen everywhere. It happens. Whatever, <laughs> man. Uh, cheers to you guys! Yeah, congratulations, you. dude, it. on the marriage, yeah, and the congratulations the on this whole look. <laughs> God damn! What do you do for a living that you're able to get uh, away with this? I'm a heavy equipment operator. Oh shit! Well, yeah. this is mandatory. This looks <laughs> mandatory. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they wouldn't even hired you. <laughs> if you didn't have a mullet and a fucking stash like that, bro. <laughs> now I understand. Yeah. Uh, all right, Delco. Since we're at the end here, there's nobody else, right? Nobody else back there. Anybody else want to come up? You're welcome to it. I don't, I don't give a shit. We're drinking the rest of the day. Who gives a fuck? Okay, cool. Um, who won that game? Illinois. Sure did. Yeah. So I'm still perfect today. Are you? It's hard being perfect, man. It's it's such a fucking burden who you got I carry on these uh, these shoulders. Uh, who are they playing? It's blocked by camera one. So South I can't. Carolina. Uh, I believe I picked South Carolina in this game. Oregon's up seven. Up seven right now. Start of the second half. Um, I'd have to check my bracket. I don't really think much of either of these teams. I know this. In the next round, I don't have either one of these guys advancing. Um, I didn't know. Or is Oregon any good this year? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I, I truthfully, I, I can't remember Oregon being good at basketball for a long time. So I mean, they made the Final Four. Hey, what year was that? Ago. That was what 2016. 16 to 18. 2017. Yeah. That's like eight. That. That's eight years ago. That's a long time. I mean, when's the last time Ohio State made it? Shit, 2008. And they're not making it back anytime soon. They hired a coach that. Uh, yeesh. Uh, look, he played for the team, and it's fine, but you still got to recruit. I would have gotten Sean Miller if I was Ohio State. So they're not going back anytime soon. Um, I'll also, by the way, with NIL, I think most teams are going in on either all football or all basketball. I don't think they have enough money to spread it around for multiple sports. That's my guess. Uh, appreciate you tuning in. Kids, March Madness is here. God damn it. Go to mybookie.com. Bet with us or against us. If you bet with me today, well, you're perfect. God damn it, I love you, okay? It's okay to be perfect. Yes, people like Delco are going to try to tear you down. But don't let them, dude. Don't let them. Be your own person, okay? I wish I had a nice, fun Springer sign-off, but I don't. Instead, I'm going to tell you to go to iTunes, rate the goddamn show a five-star, and leave a quick review. Also, head on over to Spotify. It's just a five-star, and you can walk away at that point. It helps. It's all the advertisers give a fuck about, dude. All right? Once we get to past 10,000, I'll shut the fuck up about it forever. And don't forget to go to that tasting tomorrow in Arlington, Texas, 4 to 7, at Total Wines over there. Go up and give Ryan Mills' uh, ball thack a little tug. He don't mind it. He don't mind it, pudding. And vote for me in the next upcoming election when I start to run in the South, okay? I'd appreciate that vote. I'm a politician you can trust. 
to take other people's money and all that other shit. For Anthony and Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is Drinking Bros Fake News.